Hello folks, welcome back to another episode of the Ludo Narrative, the show where we take a critical eye to the games that we love, and perhaps some games that we don't love, maybe. Uh, I'm Ashley, and I'm joined as always by Max. Howdy, I'm Max. That's Max. And uh, yeah, as you can see, today we're going to be covering Max Payne, um, an incredibly influential third-person shooter. Um, and we're going to be looking sort of at the maybe the influence of the game, sort of where it was a, a trailblazer perhaps, um, but also look at just how they put together a really tight game in 2001 um, using, you know, nothing that was completely new necessarily, but uh, using what they had and doing a very, very, very good job with it. Um, and it occurs to me I need to stream this game so Max can see as well. Oh, yeah. Ah, there we go. Um, that the game's the right game now. will help me see the game. It will, because Max, <laughs> uh, despite popular belief, uh, does not live with me, so... <laughs> Is that the popular belief? Uh, it could be. <laughs> I don't... <laughs> I don't think there's a large enough no, audience... No, no, no. Who thinks there's... that? <laughs> yeah, I don't think there's any one belief that would be shared by, like, a, a majority of our audience, because we don't really have one, but... Yeah, no. But also, uh, the accent alone. I mean, that's that that is that is the joke, Max. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Regardless, let's get into Max Payne. So let me get the game up here. Should we see that? Let me bring that over there. Can you see it, Max? I see it on the Discord. Yes. Yeah. Although it does occur to me that I have oh, uh, the display up which is not great for the stream so I'm going to turn that off um so yeah this is Max Payne or this is the menu for Max Payne um let's just get into it I suppose uh it's worth noting that while this is yes and normally a 4x3 game as the menu here sort of suggests um I'm using a widescreen patch which is mostly flawless so should be fine <laughs> um but yeah uh, let's get into it. We're not going to do the tutorial. Um, there's not a lot to talk about in the tutorial. It's mostly just exactly that, a tutorial. It doesn't introduce any story or anything of interest there. It's just, here's how you play the game. So it's not really like a level zero or first level. I'm going to a new game. Um, when it comes to difficulty level, um, when you first play this game, the only level available is Fugitive. This is, this is this game's equivalent of normal. Not easy or super easy. This is normal. And even then, this is still really hard. This is a difficult game. Um, oh. I'm not going to be playing on Hard Boiled, because this game's got enough bullshit as it is. And New Young Minute is um, a time trial, so definitely not going to do that. Uh, I thought it was, because I saw Dead on Arrival wasn't unlocked, and I'm like, why is there a difficulty past that that's unlocked? <laughs> yeah, I don't know how I feel about games that, like, gate off difficulty levels, to be honest. Mm -hmm. um, it's a bit of a weird thing. I can understand it in some cases, um, like maybe the game is balanced for like New Game Plus kind of stuff. But for sure. like like Devil May Cry does that, right? Where when you beat Devil May Cry, you then look the next difficulty level, but you keep all your stats and all your weapons and all that kind of stuff, and then it's like New Game Plus. I can understand that, but in Max Payne, this game's already hard enough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, this isn't just like a get good thing. We'll, we'll discuss it. Um, we're going to be playing the entire game, not just this stream. This is likely going to be a two stream uh, dealio, but we'll, we will play the whole game because I've beaten this a few times. It is about a six hour game. Um, certainly it will be six hours roughly for me because I've played it through a couple of times. So we'll see how it goes. But um, yeah, we're going to see levels of bullshit that um, are not acceptable, but this game's not that bad. It, it just has one or two recurring issues. Uh, let's get oh, into man. it. Into one of the game's very few in-game cutscenes. Sorry, in-engine cutscenes, I should say. Oh. Most of the cutscenes are different. Stand by 1010, investigative reported disturbance at Acer Plaza. 10 for dispatcher, verify address. That's Acer Plaza, repeat, Acer Plaza. Shots fired on the rooftop. An assault in progress at Asa Plaza. Repeat, an assault in progress. Officer in 
So it's worth noting, uh, while the game audio is generally down, they that cutscene is just really fucking loud. The final gunshot was an exclamation mark to everything <laughs> that had led to this point. I released my finger from the trigger, and then it was over. So we get the beginnings. To make of any kind of sense of it, I need to go back three years. Poetic language back to the that the pain starts. Max likes to use. I do enjoy poetry. And the loading screen's gonna look like that, don't worry about it. We were still in force back then. NYPD, Manhattan, Midtown North Precinct, Hell's Kitchen. So when are you coming to work for me, Detective Payne? You'd make me work undercover in some hell hole. Sorry, Alex. Michelle and the baby come first. See? My last smoke. It's bad for the baby. That's you, Max. A regular Boy Scout. See, Alex. You're still on for poker Thursday night, right? Like taking candy from a baby. Life was good. The sun setting on a sweet summer's day. The smell of freshly mowed lawns. The sounds of children playing. A house across the river on the Jersey side. A beautiful wife and a baby girl. The American dream come true. Honey, I'm home. But dreams have a nasty habit of going bad when you're not looking. The sun went okay. down with practice bravado. Twilight crawled across the sky, laden with foreboding. Yeah. Okay, I couldn't keep it up. Um, might be able to look back at that in a minute. Michelle, honey, anybody home? I didn't like the way the show started. But they'd give me the best seat in the house, front row, center. Okay, next time we do a cutscene that's um that style, I will specifically try and pause it. Uh. But in order to pause it, you have to skip the cutscene, as weird as it sounds. Um, oh, wow. So, they're right. So, already, straight away, we see an interesting stylistic choice, right? We see the oh, yeah. the cutscenes. They're not done in engine. They are in a graphic novel style, right? Speech bubbles, um, text bubbles for, like, you know, narration and stuff like that. Um, mm -hmm. All those, almost all the graphic novel panels in this game are photographs. They're real people. Really? Yes. Um, they are photographs with, you know, effects and artistic stuff done over the top of them, but they, they're they photographs. And this was maybe done for budget reasons, but more, more than anything, it was done because technology at the time was still limited. Getting mouth flaps was still like a very new thing, right? You know, Half-Life had done it just two years earlier, and Deus Ex one year earlier had mouth flaps as well that looked really terrible um so <laughs> lip syncing a, a mouth for like long narration and cutscenes just would look really bad so they gambled with doing uh, the graphic novel panels and i think it works it certainly aged better than the rest of this game um because this isn't this isn't a pretty game by modern standards you know i don't think it's controversial to say that um no, not but the use of photographs and stuff, even though the resolutions may be a little low um, on those graphic novel panels, they hold up, largely speaking. You know, we're going to see more of it, um, but they do hold up really well. And um, so all the people in the photos, um, they're not actors, um, they're developers, uh, developers' families, or just people off the street that they found. <laughs> Um, most notably and most famously, uh, Max is portrayed in this game visually uh, by Sam Lake, the the game's writer. Um, so you know Max's um, texture that we see here is a photograph of Sam Lake. Um, he 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 looks like that today. You can Max, you can look at pictures of Sam Lake. I think for the twentieth anniversary of this game, Sam Lake went ahead and put on Max Payne's clothes and did a whole thing. Um, just oh, just looks hilarious. like him. It's funny. Um, and like I said, he's now the creative director at Remedy, right? Like, he's pretty mm. high up in the company. Um, and he's voiced uh, by James McCaffrey, who is kind of iconic. He's just perfect voice casting for Max. He's gravelly. He's um, He's got like a very... He's got a good presence with his voice, and I think it really comes through. And we're going to oh, get... Yeah. A, we're going to hear a lot of it. He has a... He's just really good casting. And That's Max. something I noticed right away is his voice is very captivating for what's being told. Very, yeah, as someone, because again, because this is a very noir style, right? There's a lot of narration. For someone who is effectively telling a story with a voice, he's really good. I could I could listen to a, a noir audiobook read by James McCaffrey, right? Like, he's, mm, he's just really, really good. What the good. hell? Oh, 
Let's see. Oh, this, yeah. Something ugly had been tattooed on the wall. A map of things. Okay. So I can actually stop and we can look at it. Um, so apologies for skipping the narration. That's the only way to get it to pause. So yeah, you can see that this is just a photo of a very young Sam Lake here. Right. Oh, wow. And then yeah. this was probably a photo of someone's house. Um, or it could be, it could be a rendering or a drawing. Again, not all of them are photos. Um, there are a couple that are very obviously not. Um, but this, this looks okay. You could definitely see someone doing like an AI upscale of this, right? And just like make it look a little sharper, but it fits. This is really cool. Um, I think I like the way it looks so messy, you know? Yeah, no, no, exactly, because they didn't want it to just look like photographs, did they? So they had to make it look like it was done by yeah. hand. But it is also, yeah, it's quite visceral, quite messy. It's um, mm -hmm. It doesn't even look like it was done with paintbrush, right? It, it looks um, it's, it's unique. And you can see, it's hard to see on stream maybe, but there's like little swirls um, like uh, along the edge here as well. Um, in like, I don't know, to look like brush strokes, I suppose. I'm not sure. But it's something like that. Yeah, it's a really interesting style and interesting take. Um, I really like it. And like I said, of all the things in this game, I think this is the part that's aged the best. And this is a game that's got really good. Um, I mean, the writing's also aged pretty well for reasons that are, I hope will become obvious. Um, but also, uh, the gameplay is really tight. But like, I just, I love this. I love this. This is, why don't more games do this? It's usually games that are like heavily focused on, like based on comic books, right? Like I think, uh, I want to say Ultimate Spider-Man did something like this back in the day. Um, but it's very, I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't remember. I, I barely played that game, but I do. This is a very rarely done thing, right? And it, again, it's usually games that have some kind of comic book lineage in them. Rather, Max Payne doesn't. It, this is... This is a unique IP. This is something that was made up for the game. Something about this shot in particular that I really like, mm. right? Because uh, when we're looking at what's on the wall, that's clearly from Max's perspective here. Yes, yeah. I like that the center of it, while it's all still messy and stylized, as we see, yeah. is a lot cleaner as, as you go outward in what he's looking at, where there's less focus. That's where you start seeing those, what you called earlier, like brush stroke style looks. Yeah. Right, yeah. So the, the 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 very the focus is always um, it's fairly clear. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's not just done. it's not just a filter thrown over it though. Yes, it's very intentionally Time, like you yeah. to focus on it. Time was put into these certainly. Absolutely. Yes. Something ugly had been tattooed on the wall. Oh, a map of things I to can come. Still play it anyway. It was a poison syringe, a magic tag full of diabolical meanings. A little hint. Um, also, one thing to note. Um, because this was, oh, actually, I kind of did it here already, yeah, because this was a game of the early 2000s, late 90s. You can interact with just everything. Um, the game was uh, so developed by Remedy, um, published by Gathering of Developers, which was a fairly short-lived publisher, but produced, because this is a weird game where the publisher and the producer are two separate companies, uh, by 3D Realms. Um, so the same people that made Duke Nukem 3D. Um, so you can kind of see some of the stuff that... It, a big thing that Duke Nukem 3D did um, is environmental interaction. So you could like turn on faucets, flush toilets, pay strippers. Um, <laughs> <laughs> toys, right? Just like little things that you can like fidget with in the environment. And mm -hmm. it's clear that obviously whoever... Oh my shit. Um, we'll look at the credits later. But whoever was um, out of 3D Realms, whose name really escapes me right now and it's bugging me... Um, was giving some direction for this game. I imagine that was one of the things that was there. I was like, hey, this is a really popular thing in a lot of our games. Put it in this one. It'll pay off, right? Um, and oh, so... Yeah, absolutely. I'm not going to see a whole lot of it here, but like, look, I can I can open these cabinets. Is there anything in them? Oh, it's actually and it sort of does come down there. to, like... <laughs> it, it then sort of becomes this... Um, now games where you can't interact with these things going on immediately around you yeah. sort of feels stale. Kind of, yeah. I think there's, there are definitely a lot of games where the world doesn't feel... It, you can't really interact with it. It is just like... A, you, you can feel that it is just a mesh around you. Like like Halo, right? H Halo came out a few... Um, actually, the same year as this and has no environmental interaction whatsoever. I don't think any of the Halo games really do. It's never been a thing. But it's not necessary for those games, right? Um, no. But there is... I think there is a value in it in like making it so that you do feel somewhat a part of the world because... 
like, you know, because I can interact with it, this cabinet no longer feels like just a model, right? It moves. It's 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 dynamic, right? Yeah. It's an object. Um, um yeah. I, I like that. It's it's something that 3D Realms did in a few of their games. It was in Duke Nukem 3D, obviously. Um, Shadow Warrior, I think. Well, I don't know if that was developed by 3D Realms, but it was certainly published by them, or maybe Apogee. Um, I'll go back and forth between Apogee and 3D Realms. They're effectively the same company for the sake of this. Um, but if I say one, I mean, <laughs> just think of it the same people that make Duke Nukem um, and yeah. are now largely just Gearbox. Um, again, Gearbox being a completely separate company that absorbed a lot of Apogee's IPs and stuff, but yeah. Um, and Randy Pitchford was working at 3D Realms at this time as well, who is now the guy that runs Gearbox, so... There's a lot of... All, all the people working in, like, shooters in, like, the late 90s just went on to, like, run the entire industry. Uh, it's kind of nuts. Pretty much. Listen, someone's broken into my house. Call 911. Is this the pain residence? Yes, someone's broken into my house. They're still here. You have to... Good. I'm afraid I cannot help you. Who is this? Hello? A little bit of mystery being set up there. What's going on? Obviously, something's happening. The house is in disarray. We pick up the phone. A woman is, it has called us for some reason and is really cagey and mysterious, and she's just double-checking that she's phoned the right house. Um, it's worth noting, actually, for anyone watching, um, this is a full spoilers stream. Um... In order to fully discuss the game, we will sometimes have to discuss spoilers. So I will be discussing at times things later on in the game um, that happen later on in the game earlier on. And there may also be spoilers for Max Payne 2 as well, because obviously there's going to be some tying in there and stuff. So if that is something that does concern you, now is probably the time to leave. You've had your warning. Anyway, that phone call is from the main antagonist of the game. Uh... Oh, really? You don't say? <laughs> A main antagonist who you don't even fucking see or hear about until over halfway through, I think. Um, it's nice that they set it up like that, though. Yeah, it is. So here now, we have... I will say, hmm. I've never actually seen gameplay of this game before. Really? I've never interacted with Max Payne in any capacity. That's quite surprising. So, you'd think with my name in an action game, I'd want to play it. I just never did. It's not just an action game, though, either. This is like... Like the action one, game. one of the action games, certainly, yeah. Um, <laughs> it was not the first third person shooter, but I think it kind of set a standard for third person shooters. Mm -hmm. well, I think we can interact with TVs as well. Um, yeah. But there's little details here. So, again, you know, a fairly large, nice living room here, lots of books, yeah, I'm a modest TV, but you know, it's kind of standard for the 90s. Um, a picture of a pair don't know um you can see Honestly, i want that hung in my house just look to the left of the screen you can see yeah they even went and put wedding photos or not wedding photos but um oh no you can barely see because it it's low res but it's a it's baby photos it's max his wife and their oh. baby is being swaddled in her arms so kind of setting That's up a little bit detail. there it is like most that. people aren't going to stop and look at that and then if we look over here you can see a thing that says the hero cops and you can just barely make out that it's max there um, and his partner, Alex. He's holding his gun in his hand. Like a baby. Oh, yeah, oh yeah. down there. Sorry, yeah. In in the middle here as well. It's also Max and Alex. I was looking at this here, but yeah. Oh. Um, <laughs> sorry, it's because I'm trying to get, like, the way the camera works, right? Trying to get the stuff close yeah. up so you can see. And then you got... I was looking where the crosshair was, and I'm like, yeah, yeah, look at that. <laughs> yeah, and then above the crosshair, towards the top of the screen, that looks like three devs from Remedy, I guess? Yeah. <laughs> that looks like a developer Maybe cousins, photo. you know? I've always said I do, like, um... I do like when devs put themselves in the games. This game does it more than any, I think, because all the people model are like, you know, photos of the devs and stuff. I'm sure Alex was probably a dev. Um, real name, not Alex, I assume, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, standard still life photos here. But okay. So this bit's really interesting. The game intentionally leads us into the bathroom here. Can hear something awful going on. You're intended to rush. The bathroom's open. We the cutscene focuses on here, so we go through. Oh no! We can't open the door. So we go out and look into the hallway. Freeze! NYPD, drop it! Uh, also worth noting, what are these guys wearing? 
no, no, please, God, no. Keep a note of it, because what are they wearing, right? That's like almost prison uniforms? It's unusual. It's, it's certainly not normal clothes. No. Um, like... But I want, I just, with the bathroom thing before I look at this dead baby. Um, <laughs> just really pay attention to that. Keep that in the back of your mind, because it's going to come up later, as odd as it sounds. Right. Oh yeah, you can't actually interact with the dead baby, but there's uh, Max's dead daughter. Um, I, was, oh God, I always look at things wow. like this to see if there is anything written in it. I don't think there is. No. Uh, but yeah, this is a this is a grim scene, right? Max is, you know, the previous cutscene, um, just before all this, we see like, oh, you know, he stopped smoking, it's bad for the baby, he's a boy scout, he's living the life. And it's all taken from him. Just like that. And this helps set up um, the main driving oh, no, force for our no, character. Oh, God, no, please, Michelle. Oh, baby. Oh, well, we can't. But yeah, that, that interesting decision. So the reason the bathroom thing is interesting is because it's been a while, but I don't think you actually need to go to the bathroom. Or maybe you do. Maybe you do. But, nat but like naturally, you just go no! that way anyway because the cutscene leads you there, right? Oh, yeah. Man, that is a that was three horrible years ago. start. Oh my Everything God. Apart yeah, it's, it's dark. The killer junkies had been high on a previously unknown designer drug, Valkyr, V. After the funeral, I told Alex I'd be transferring to the DEA. It took us three long years to get a break in the Valkyr case. Then, finally, two months ago, a dime dropper tipped us off that Jack Lupino, a mob boss in the Punchinello crime family, was trafficking. I went undercover infiltrated the worst mafia family in New York. Okay, I'm stopping here. I also like this. <laughs> this is really good. So again, we get we get Max Payne there, looming over the city. Uh, at the edges, it's all fuzzy. But this is a panorama. This is three separate cells, right? This is three separate comic um, cells. But they all come together into a panorama. They didn't need to separate them. This is purely stylistic because they wanted to introduce it piece by piece. They could have just had this as one image, and I do I find it interesting that because they are separating out the narration into separate sections, they're putting in it every you know every sentence gets its own cell, so that's how we get this like nice spread here. I really like oh, yeah. that. So, I, I love the way it looks, and the way it looks like he's just sort of the tallest building in the city, too. Hmm. When you, when you have it look like that, like nothing's gonna pass his gaze, if you will. The city is kind of its own character in this game, um, and particularly in Max Payne 2, but for different reasons. Um, but uh, the city plays a big part in it, and the weather is also kind of tied in because of the. It's really cold. <laughs> the mercury is falling fast. I think is the line that is used in the game, um, and there's like this storm going on, and it ties up with what's going on in the game because as things get more violent and darker as the game goes on the weather gets harsher and harsher and harsher and it's not until everything comes everything gets fixed that the weather sort of breaks um and it's this this idea there's there's, there's this storm looming over new york um there's the snow falling but there's also max's um tr like a like warpath that he's carving out. His his mission of revenge also looms over the city. And while we don't see it now, it's going to become pretty evident soon. And I like this image because it really shows that. Really does show him looming over the city. Literally, so. but he's, yeah. he's he casts a shadow over the city. Like it, it, you'll see. It took us three long years to get a break in oh. the Valkyr case. Then finally, two months ago. It took us three. Oh my god, okay, I can't skip it, but just have to watch this. <laughs> I thought finally, if I just two months click ago, it would do it. Dime dropper it. tipped us off that Jack Lupino, a mob boss in the Punchinello crime family, was trafficking. I went undercover, infiltrated the worst mafia family in New York. A Punchinello crime family. Punchinello is a good Italian mafia name, if you ask me. I came me. in from the cold and the dark. Outside the city was a cruel monster. I've been slowly working my way from the small time to the big fish trying to get to the source of the drug. Alex and BB were my only contacts in the DEA, the only ones in this decrepit city who knew I was down here. BB here. Something urgent has come up with Jack Lapino. You need to meet with Alex immediately at the Roscoe Street Station. I hadn't had a face-to-face -face with Alex since I'd gone undercover. 
Outside, the mercury was falling fast. It was colder than the devil's heart, raining ice pitchforks as if the heavens were ready to fall. Everyone was running for shelter like there was no tomorrow. It didn't get any better when I got to the subway. The feeling hit me like a point-blank shot straight in the face. Something was not right about this. So the writing... My Beretta stirred oh. nervously under my coat, but the train doors had already shut behind me, and I was in for the ride. Next stop, Roscoe Street Station, and Alex. So the writing is a little clunky at times, I will admit. Um, it does feel like the writers are going a little too hard to find similes and metaphors. That being said, it is appropriate for the sort of genre that this the is aping, right? The station was drenched in gloom. Alex was a ghost, nowhere to be seen. I'd have to look for him. It's been some years since I've seen the Maltese Falcon, but... <laughs> Um, I eat this kind of stuff up. Just, I know you do. Like I, I knew you'd love on this. Top of metaphors, it's oh, it's it's great. It's completely unnecessary, ham-fisted metaphors. But you know what? This game isn't trying to be bigger than that. Oh yeah, it's, it's so good. it's wonderful. So I want to before we continue on, I want to just you know, when you cast your eyes across this, um, have you ever been to New York, Max? Yes, actually, you have. I so have I. It's been some years, but I have been to New York. Um, mm -hmm. so the people at Remedy in order to, because they wanted to set this game in New York, in order to uh, appro uh, effectively, correctly uh, accurately, that's the word, in order to accurately um, show New York in this game or to um, portray it correctly um, they went to New York um, and they took photos, but they didn't just go to New York, they got private security um, with them and they went to some of the most uh, poverty stricken areas of new york um play the kind of places where people would get gunned down in the street in you know on a particularly bad night um mm -hmm. not that that's like a thing that happens all over new york but that you know people die in new york new york can be a shitty place in certain areas it's there's a lot of poverty all over the world cities have a lot of poverty in them um and so they went and they took photos of everything <laughs> these are finnish developers they're not american so they wanted to make sure they got it right, and this was before you could just go on the internet and go on Google Street View and just look at what it looks like. So they went there and they took photos, and some of those photos were used for the um, graphic novel panels that we see. And some of them were used for stuff like this, right, to try and get a good, accurate representation of what the New York subway station looks like, right? Um, and I like this. I like it. It's gritty. It's grimy. Like, you know, a bit of effort has been put in there to show that it is. Uh, I think a lot of the things in this game um, are just scans of, like, real-life photos and stuff of this kind of thing. But you can kind of see this is this is a gross subway station. It's not the worst one, but it's not particularly pretty either. No. I uh, one, one thing I appreciate when you look on the wall that's behind you right now... Um all over it you see just broken or fallen off or ripped off tiles yes. and in between those tiles it's still just uh grimy muck between the, the yeah. squares and it, it just looks so visceral i love it got little bits of like um of graffiti here on the walls and stuff like that newspapers mm -hmm. strewn out a bin fallen over um oh what are these how could they get there <laughs> mm. um yeah no i i, I love this stuff and well, I'm not going to sit here and say, oh, this is the best depiction of New York in a video game. It is far from it, but it's pretty damn good at times, and they get a lot of stuff right. It feels appropriately gross. Um, it doesn't just look like it's from New York. It feels like it. Yeah. I mean, I'm not a New Yorker, right? I can't I can't speak completely to it. I've, like I said, I've simply been a tourist in New York, so, mm -hmm. you know, we can... I mean, that, I've lived but... in the city of Chicago, and I know Chicago and New York are fairly different cities. There's there's a vibe that you get with a city that's kind of hard to nail down, and I think they yeah. did a very good job here. For sure. I like this. Let's carry on here. Oh, dear. Oh, no. Oh, no, indeed. Death was in the air at Roscoe Street. I'd have to find Alex fast. So the mission, and again, like we can search things, we can open up these lockers. Most of them have nothing in them, but every now and then, one of them does. All these showers, we can interact with them. Look at this! The height of technology in 2001. Showers can be turned on and off. 
Truly, this was a transformative experience. Indeed. Oh, okay. I think we're about to hear my. Hold the pain back for a while. Max, you son of a bitch! I was giving a. <laughs> <laughs> so, this is how healing works in this game. If you look in the bottom left, there's a, a silhouette of Max. There's a little hourglass, and then there's the pills. Right. Uh -huh. um, the hourglass is our bullet time. That goes down as I use that. Um, the silhouette is Max's health. That fills up with red. If it's red, Max is dead. And let's see the pills. And so you use the pills at instant speed, as it were. You use them whenever you like. You stock them up up to a maximum of eight. And every time you use them, it slowly, you know, it's not an instant heal, but it does, it starts to heal you. And Max right there gives you the justification for this game's health system in one line. <laughs> <laughs> he says it. The pills will help me ignore the pain for a while. That's that's it. The the game knows like it, they're health kits. How do we justify health kits, right? And like you know, they decided to go with painkillers, which is another interesting point in this game that we'll I'll talk about later. But like that that's great. You just you say you you recognize that it's a silly system that like health kits lying around on the floor and stuff is kind of silly. So you kind of give a justification. It's not healing him. It's just helping him fucking get through, like getting shot. Yeah. That there must be the is, there must be yeah. the best fucking painkillers in the world. I won't deny it. <laughs> I like to think that a variety of them are going to be different brands. That way you don't you know build up a tolerance to any one. <laughs> Uh, this is just um oh shit what's the stuff that house takes um ah oh, shit i don't remember it now the what, what is it like a really popular um opiate the doctors prescribe i want to say it starts with an oh. f but maybe not um uh, i don't remember shit it's really bugging me fentanyl? i don't know no not fentanyl um no i remember but um yeah there's that also simon's here hey simon um, but yeah, I just, I love that. I love that the game bothers to try and justify it. Some games do it in different ways. Half-Life had the HEV suit as a justification because like you plug, you know, it, it, you know, it's surrounding your body and you plug into, um, you know, uh, these machines on the walls that heal you and recharge it and stuff like that. So I can, I can see that makes sense. A uh, Riddick, the Chronicles of Riddick game, Escape from Butcher Bay did a similar thing where there were these panels on the walls that would like stab you with these huge fucking needles um then that would heal you and you're like okay it's a sci-fi it's set in the future it's on a different planet i can kind of understand that but for a contemporary game like this that's just a dude running around with guns it's really hard to justify a health kit <laughs> right oh my god they, they don't oh. just fix you up vicodin vicodin thank you yes vicodin no i'm just imagining they're just vicodin um <laughs> but yeah it's um I I love the attempt to just uh, at a justification. Wasn't he supposed to take care of this. He and Mickey are having too much fun taking care of the cop up there. Oh, well, what's the plan? Simple. Gun down every mother-loving bastard that gets off the train. Sweet. It didn't the train go already? No idea. Let's just wait and see. So these guys knew to expect someone to come off the train. But I've already gone off the train. So did they already know I was coming, and why did they know I was coming? More mysteries being put forward by this game. It's really weird. <laughs> Who are these guys? Why do they know? Well, they're I think just... I'm, they must be friendly. I think they must that's... be. Let's go say hello. Hey! How else would they know about you? Oh, no! Oh, they're not friendly. They should be diving. Oh, yeah. Oh, shit. So an interesting thing to note about this game is the guns are not accurate. Not even slightly. If it, I'm going to aim over there at that wall. That's like, what, 20 meters away? You can kind of oh, see where everything's wow. hitting. There's a, there's a large spread and that doesn't get any better. Um, granted, I think the Desert Eagle here is a little more accurate. Yeah, you can see that's kind of hitting a bit closer, but still pretty wide. Um, this is a run and gun game. This is spray and pray from start to finish. You are not expected to hit every shot. Um, that being said, there are headshots, so the game does reward you for accuracy, even though you don't have any. Um, <laughs> I guess you have accuracy, you have just zero precision. Um, but you are going to chew through your ammo, because that's the best way of dealing with this game, right? You are going to spray around. You're not an elite marksman, you're a cop um, <laughs> who is running around and stuff. So 
it makes sense and i do like it it does actually fit the gameplay loop of this um they change it a bit in max Payne 2 and certainly max Payne 3 but in this game you're not accurate and you've got to deal with that and sometimes it's going to fuck you but most of the time it's it actually works out quite nicely mm, absolutely yeah oh. he's dead all right hey it's me you're talking to <laughs> Also, if you ever just needed a game that was full of, like, generic Italian mook, this is that game. Yeah, he's dead all right. Hey, it's me you're talking to. <laughs> oh, good. It's... The, the, this is all played very straight. As much as these guys are larger than life, I need to say it. The world in this game is played very straight. Um, and I'm saying that because... Boy, howdy, is it not in the sequel? And the difference is astonishing. Um, Can we go back to that sign that said, what, what did that say? Kong. Kong whiskey <laughs> makes you go ape. Go ape. <laughs> I don't think alcohol should ever be out. <laughs> Advertisers makes you go ape. That is terrible advertising. No, honey. He's got into the Kong whiskey again. No! <laughs> No! <laughs> He's going ape! Oh my god. <laughs> Kong whiskey was taken off the shelves due to um, incredibly high rates of uh, domestic abuse. Uh... <laughs> hey, you're the one that laughed at that, not me, so who's the real monster? Um... <laughs> Again, uh, more developers here, I assume. <laughs> I... Some yeah, that makes sense. Also, this is just a cool piece of art. I like that. That's good. That's I good graffiti. I do wonder if, they, if some of the graffiti in the game that we're going to see was made by them, or if they saw it in real life and they're like, oh, that Like this tag right here? There. Yeah. I think... What does that say? Does that say... I think that says... I, think I says don't age? know. Age or angel, maybe? I don't know. I think it says age. I don't know. You hear me? What is this a joke? <laughs> hey! Fuck. Anybody? Answer me! <laughs> Sorry, I forgot how funny these guys were. Anyway, he's dead. Hold it. Oh. Sometimes you get these cutaways when you kill someone in, in bullet time. I'm not is sure it what it's causes the last it. Person you I kill? think so? I think so, because it, it, it's... It's what yeah. it was in the house. Yeah, it might be that, uh, but it does. it's kind of inconsistent. But it, it's a cool little thing, They a very cinematic feature, as it were. And again, this film, this game, this film, if there was film. a film, we won't talk much about it, but this game does <laughs> um, take a lot of inspiration from movies, so um, I, I think it wears that pretty clearly on its sleeve. Specifically, um, hey, I mean... Uh... Oh, shit. Uh, as well as like noir movies, as we've mentioned, um, there's a clear inspiration here from the um, from like Hong Kong um, Hong Kong action movies, uh, particularly like the works of John Woo, um, with like uh, movies like Hard Boiled and stuff. And um, just it, it, there's a lot of that. It it doesn't the bullet time is a part of that. Um, you know, The Matrix wasn't the first film to use bullet time, um, but obviously The Matrix being fairly popular. Certainly didn't hurt this game. Uh, <laughs> oh shit. Oh fuck. Uh, but yeah, a lot of a lot of John Woo stuff, and it's a weird marriage of of genres, I guess. Is um, again like the American noir movie and Hong Kong action, but it works. Yeah. It really works. These guys have been weird. All right. Shotguns in this game. Um, as inconsistent as every other weapon, and because they're shotguns, it's like, you know, inconsistent, time's inconsistent. Oh my god, please don't die in the first level. So sometimes you'll shoot someone and they'll go flying, and then, and like, you know, from like quite a distance away. Sometimes you'll hit someone at point blank range and they'll shrug it off. Alex, they had ended up in the middle of a big time crime operation. Always check every goddamn locker in this game, because there'll be ammo and painkillers, and god, you'll need them. Dual wielding? Ooh. Yeah, yeah, some weapons can be dual wielded, not many. Um, 
but way more in the second game. Um, a lot more dual wielding. So these guys are hitting a bank. So again, we're getting a little bit more about what they've got going. Oh shit. Oh shit, he's fired. There we go. I think one problem with that system where they the get like was zoom locked. in. I would have to find another way to get to the tunnel. Is, is the fact that um you zoom in you get a good look at the really flat face. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> oh yeah. Like look at this dude. He's just having a nap. <laughs> he's just chilling. Yeah. You know what's wrong with taking little napsies here and there? Exactly. Uh Kiss it goodbye. No. Oh! <laughs> Just didn't have a chance. <gasps> you saved, saved me, him. man. What's going on here? A massacre. These armed thugs. Look at that man's. Look at that beautiful face. I can make the call from the control Look at room one floor up. Can you take me there? Look at that beautiful man. Sounds good. Follow me. He's a good ventriloquist. <laughs> certainly is. Like I said, there are no mouth flaps in this game. <laughs> Another weird thing, so with Max, because, you know, in this game, it's Sam Lake, it was used as like the, the model Frankly, for him. I'm too scared to go to the control in room on my all own three Max Payne games, they use a different person as a point of reference for Max, so he looks completely different in every game. Really? Yes, it's really weird. It really bugs me when games do this. Uh, Just Cause does it as well. Uh, Rico looks completely different in the first three Just Cause games. Like, all three of them, he's just a different person. Home free, uh, this way. <laughs> Wow. Really makes it difficult sometimes to kind of like connect to a character when they just look different every time. But it's not the worst thing in the world, but it is it was a bugbear of mine. Particularly when Max Payne 3 came out and they didn't make him look like he did in Max Payne 2. But um alright, time for the first really difficult room of this game. Oh you got this. Yeah, I do, but Get him! Another downside to um, everyone having been modeled off of developers' faces and stuff. Um, you're going to see the same face like 50 times in this game. Uh, let's go to shot. I don't think we know what in here is there. Nope. It, so, a downside here to the system of painkillers in this game is could you justify to me why in this control room there's a cabinet of painkillers on the wall? Well, every room needs a bed kit. I'd be... First aid kits, sure, <laughs> but first aid kits don't usually have, again, presumably Vicodin in them. Um, the train lit up a like a Christmas point. tree. The power was back on. So, another thing here that, about this game that is a bit of a weakness, particularly at this point, is... Mac, we know that Max wants to turn on the train because he's told us that's what he wants. So we've turned on the train. Do you know why we've turned on the train? I imagine to get on it. But why? To go where? Do what? Yeah, don't know. Exactly. Like we, the game doesn't do a good job of, of explaining why it is we want to get on this particular train down here. Hmm. In this decommissioned tunnel. Do you think that's a problem with what the game has for storytelling overall, or specifically this early portion of the game? This particular thing is that, but it, it it does show itself a little bit as the game goes on, is the justification for why Max is doing some things is never ex not necessarily explained at the time. The game will just say, go do this, and you're like, why am I doing this? And it, the answer is, you'll see! So like in Ma I guess in, Max Payne. in in the character of Max in his head he knows what he wants but we the player don't and I don't know how I feel about that because on the one hand sure I'm not playing this game for the narrative and to know what everything is doing the game is leading me by the nose towards action which is the real reason I'm playing this but at the same time sometimes it's nice to know why I'm doing something rather than just kind of trust that it's going to you know progress the game 
Oh, for sure. So it is It is a bit of a weird one. I, at no point before this did they actually explain why we're taking the train. We're about to see why. Because Max is a lunatic. Also, this train goes from, like, naught to fast really quick. So much for being subtle. So, <laughs> the reason we did that, and I guess as a player you could have gleaned it. Um, oh, shit. Kill these dudes. Oh, come on. No, no. Oh my god, i got to change weapons. So, you're going to be using bullet time in this game a lot. Most of the time it's going to be in the form of those uh, shoot dodges, um, because the normal bullet time is pretty limited. Um, so you can glean, you could glean from details that, okay, you need to get past this gate, because we saw the people here and they were doing something over here and we wanted to get past it. Mm -hmm. The train bit though, now I'll admit I'm a little bit dense at times, but that wouldn't be the first thing that comes to my mind, you know? Um. You know, in, in that respect, I gotta say, I think I think like Max. Really? Really? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, so a good look at the health system here now, so you can see in the bottom left, I've taken some damage. I've got two painkillers. If I use both of them, you can see that it like brings the health down and it slowly brings it down to a point. Um, you can see like where it's kind of partially transparent, go down, to, going down to where the I opaque bit is. I have a tiny issue with it. Oh, it's the puny issue. What's the Why puny do you issue? hear him crunching on the pills? It's not, it's not crunching on the pills, it's the shake of the bottle. Is it the shake of the bottle? Yeah, okay. yeah, so it's, it's like a, it's like like a bottle crunching. shaking. Okay, okay. I don't have a, I don't, mm. yeah, I don't, all my pills are in cardboard boxes, so I can't make the sound for you, but I, it's, <laughs> I assure you, it's, um, it, that's, that's a, that's a pill bottle sound. The rusty door led to an abandoned part of the station, closed off since the early 40s. Something big was going down in Roscoe Street. Maybe that's why Alex had wanted to meet me here. Maybe not. One way or the other, I was going to find out. Something big is going down involving Punchinello crime family. Ooh. Gonna get more mooks. Gotta say, love the fact that their, that their family name has the word punch in it. It's not exactly subtle. No, uh, subtlety is too classy. Yeah, subtlety is not what this game has. Hey, uh... ah! I should start using this. I will say, even. already from what we've seen, that I have played games where there are mechanics in them most definitely inspired from this. Yeah, I. It's something I wanted to touch on, I guess, is. Yo! Is um that this this is a very form formative <laughs> Sorry, I'm trying to like shoot guns and deal with deal with this at the same time. Um this is a very influential, not formative, um third person shooter. Because third person shooters before this game were generally fairly clunky. Um there was MDK, which is... MDK, actually, I, I say we're fairly clunky and I go straight to MDK. MDK is actually a very smooth, very fast shooter. It feels great. But there's no vertical aiming. It's all... The entire game takes place more or less in a horizontal plane. And that's how it kind of gets around it. Um, and that game feels more like piloting a mech almost, rather than just like doing normal, traditional third-person shooter stuff. Because um, you're just kind of like zipping around really fast. Like something out of Gundam. It's... There's that. Um... But other games like, uh, I don't know, Siphon Filter, uh, Metal Gear Solid, um, uh, I'm trying to really think now, my brain's going, there was a Mega Man one, there's, there's, there was plenty of third person shooters before this, but they were all very limited, you usually used lock-on systems for aiming at things, right, so you'd lock onto a thing and then like circle straight fit or whatever, um, or like something would be up to you, get like a slow, and then lock onto it. Um, there yeah. was a uh, James Bond game came out not too long after this on the Xbox and PS2 called Everything or Nothing, and that used a system where you'd lock onto the enemy and then get like some fine movement over their body, um, oh, weird. which was kind of a weird hybrid system. But like this, this game was just like first-person shooter controls in a third-person shooter. Here's how we make it work, and it works really well. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, real quick, also, mm. 
just a friend saying hi. Hello, bird. Good to see you joining us. Oh yeah, that's all. Welcome friend to the bird. stream, bud. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. Um, and yeah, we we you're gonna see that a lot with Max Payne, where just like the fluidity of movement, the 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 way that we're shooting and stuff like that, just feels right and very natural. Um, it. Th I would say that most modern third-person shooters have some root in what Max Payne set forth here, really. Um, mm -hmm. it, it did a really good job of it. I can't speak for consoles, um, because I, while I did play this game on console, that was 20 years ago. Uh, so I can't... I do not remember how good or bad the aiming was. Um, but this, you know, the same year that this came out, Halo came out, which was itself a really formative game for first-person shooters, particularly on consoles. Um, and Max Payne was, I want to say, a similar sort of game for the third-person shooter genre. Mm -hmm. I, I think a big part of this, too, is I've seen influences of this game in first-person shooters I've played. Yeah, Fear, uh, which came out a few years after this, definitely takes influence from this game. Um, Fear takes big influence actually, because it has, as well as the um, the bullet time system that the that, that game has, it also has the exact same health system. <laughs> wow. With the um, obviously not painkillers, it's it is med kits and that, but you do pick them up and you just carry them with you and use them, you know, in the moment really, um, without like any slowing uh, down or anything. A game that comes to mind for something that I know definitely took inspiration from this was. Um... I think it's called Maximum Action. Okay. What the hell I don't know that? if you've ever seen this game. Uh, it's a more recent game. I think it's still in development. Mm -hmm. But it's basically Max Payne, but first person from the looks of things. <laughs> Fair enough. I thought you'd bring it. You were supposed to bring it. Yeah, right. Oh, shit. Arguing over the detonator. But there's infighting. There's a bit of infighting. <laughs> there is. There's actual infighting in this game. Um, also, uh, Bird, thank you so much for the follow. I really appreciate it. I hope you enjoy the stream. The door had been welded shut ages ago and the bomb was missing a detonator. So, Sword Off Shotgun um, has about the same damage as the pump action, um, but has worse spread. Um, but the ad like, Way worse spread, but the advantage of this is you can fire it quite fast. Which lets you do that. So, but it's got the reload um, after two shots. So, mm -hmm. a little bit of a um, yeah, you can't cheat in this one like you can in Max Payne too. So yeah, there's a little bit of a um, downside to it. In if you know you're only facing one or two enemies, it's pretty good. But when you're facing entire rooms of dudes, it really holds you back. And then you get situations like this where the dude just shrugs off the round. Holy crap. This this took a quick turn. Yeah. Suddenly I see why they wanted to go in those systems. They've been saying, like, they've been mentioning that they, they were hitting the bank, and Max himself said something big is going down at Roscoe Street. This is Roscoe Bank. So this is, um... Fair enough. This is, this is why they were going through these subways, and why they used this old abandoned subway here from the 40s. Are those meant to be bills or gold bars? AU gold. Gold bars, alright. <laughs> the cool thing about third person shooters is you can look around corners before you expose yourself. That's a ridiculous amount of gold. What the hell? Yeah, that's like, not quite Fort Knox, but that's um, National Reserve kind of gold, yeah. that for this range. Oh, hello. So a downside to the chew dodge, um, which I've not really talked about, um, even though it has been happening, is I'm just going to do it here. Once you hit the ground, you have that little animation where you have to get back up. And depending on where you land, so if I land on my back here, it's quite slow. Um, it feels fat. It looks fast, but when you're getting shot at and you can't fire, it's the slowest thing in the world. Oh yeah. 
this is just some painkillers lying out. Great. Okay, that's realistic. I will admit, at like my work desk in the past, I've definitely left painkillers. Not like right out in the open, but like in my drawer or something. Maybe they were on the chair. Maybe. We come to you now live from the crime scene. Who is this? Right back <laughs> at you. This is Deputy Chief Jim Bravora from the NYPD. You are to cease your criminal activities and surrender immediately. Sure thing, Jim. Me and the boys have been talking and everyone's real sorry. <laughs> They'll never do it again. Who the hell is this? Being placed at the scene of a bank robbery wouldn't have tipped the odds in my favor. So we didn't talk about it a lot, but Max is an undercover DEA agent. Um, that's, that's who Max is at this point in his career. He, um, so Jim Bravora was technically his old boss. Um, and he's, he's the joke of this whole game. Uh, Jim Bravora is just constantly made a fool of. He's like the the rattle, like curmudgeonly police chief who's like, you know, you're a loose cannon and stuff like that. And he's, you know, he's he's out of touch and he's just an idiot. This whole game, you never you never meet him, but you see him like on the TV and stuff like that. And he's just stupid the entire time. <laughs> I think the thing I loved about that right there was Max just going, "We come to you live from the bank." <laughs> right over score laying the table. Okay, so the bank, this is what the robbers were after, not the gold. The bank robbers have been after Acer Corporation bonds. The Acer success story had recently been on every channel and on the cover of every magazine. Have the Acer Corporation bonds? Hmm. Weird stutters. I think it's just in this area for some reason. The bank robbers had left their tools on the table. Okay, so here's Judging the, um, by the detonators, detonators, the crooks had bought enough explosives to send Lady Liberty into orbit. <laughs> oh my god. Ooh, the, the foot. Oh, okay. Didn't even realize there was a thing there. There you go. 2001, ladies and gentlemen. Uh... <laughs> Holy shit, I got him with that last shot. Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. Speaking of bullshit. <laughs> they really don't like you. If you've never, like, so I, I know the sound of grenades hitting the ground in this game. If you've never heard it and you don't see that dude throw it down, you're fucked. Proper fucked. Oh, this is not wise, but I'm doing it anyway. Wow, I am chewing through my ammo. How many breaths are ammo I do? There we go. Jeez. When you shoot in this game, do you have to click every individual time? No, I just hold down. Okay. Uh, let me check with That's the shotgun what I though. Based on the speed. Yeah, shotgun I can hold down. Sword off shotgun I can hold down. Yeah, you just hold down. Okay. Desert Eagle, despite being a pistol, cannot be dual wielded in this game, which kind of makes sense. Uh, though in yeah, in, in, the, in the sequel, though, you can dual wield them. Okay. Another example here of an in-engine cutscene. Really used. <laughs> Walter White. Max. That's Jesus. Alex. You almost gave me a heart attack. Oh. I nearly shot you. Alex. I'm glad to see you. What the hell's going on? There are more corpses here than at the city morgue. It's an armed robbery. A tunnel job straight to the Roscoe Bank vault through the old station wall. Is this why... This is Lupino's gig? This is Lupino's doing? Lupino's men? Really? You sure know how to pick a place? Can you get through? No, it's locked. We gotta get out of here. If it's Lupino, it's... Alex? Alex! So there was nothing I could do. He was dead. I could tell by the empty, accusing stare of his eyes. There is that beautiful language again. So here's the second driving force in Max's life. He's lost his wife, his daughter, and now his best friend. Um, but also with it, one of the two people who knows that he's an undercover DEA agent. Gonna come up. Um, yeah, so Max has lost everything. Um, he is... 
Um, he's very upset, as one can imagine. And he's gone off the rails. Um, and we're going to see it. He doesn't give a shit. Um, <laughs> and that kind of way he, you know, he dealt with Deputy Chief Jim Bravora on the phone there is how he's now going to deal with everyone in this entire game because he doesn't care anymore. All he cares about is revenge and whatever happens along the way is, you know, inconsequential to him. Anyway, would you, you like a... You um... revenge, don't you? Gotta bury two graves. Yeah, that's true. That is a that is a proverb. Anyway, would you like a... a... Uh, an I'll take a, <laughs> I'll take a, I'll take that top one. It's, I think it's just called Mister. Uh, sorry, all we got is Splunk. Ah, <laughs> oh, man. I also, like Splunk. you can just, you can just keep doing it. And again, like every, ah, oh, it's all out. Give <laughs> back my money. Up. Oh shit, I've only got one round left in this gun. Oh, and it was a headshot. Oh shit. Oh. Sword-off shotgun's still very good for dealing with a single person. I imagine. Sweet. Alright. Open the exit gate, which is that one. Is there anything down here? Nope. Okay. And that is Roscoe Street Station, I believe. Now, this might get into spoily territory, and, uh -huh. and if you want to, you can just tell me to say, uh, you know, just be like, hey, wait. But, uh, are we going to be looking at boss fights in this game? Or is that not like a... Yes! Alex, there are boss fights. Alex had for the past three years. Now I didn't know how I felt. Somehow he had stumbled upon something big and ended up stepping on Jack Lupino's toes. Yeah, there are boss fights. They're not Pino good. Pino ran his racket of sex, drugs, and contract killings from a sleazy hotel in a slum block of tenements. The NYPD was closing in. I could hear the sirens. Their wail was a crescendo. Lupino thought he could get us by taking Alex out and leaving me to take the fall for it. All he had gotten was my attention. I went for the hotel first. It was a sad old thing with flickering lamps and faded colors cheap mobster punks and tired-eyed prostitutes. I walked straight in, playing at Bogart, like I'd done a hundred times before. The place was run by a couple of murdering mobsters with shark smiles. The Finito Brothers. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the pain in the butt. Painted a max. You're killing me. Do you make that up yourselves, or you get some wino downstairs to come up with it? Don't answer that. A rhetorical question. I got something for the boss. Lupino around? That kind of depends on who's asking. A friend or a junk squad plant? The don't answer. It's one of them, uh, how do you put it, uh, rhetorical questions. Look at the dude on the left holding by. the gun. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this dude. <laughs> Can we all appreciate <laughs> So here's the downside of just taking photos of your friends. They're not professional actors. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> you get shit like this joker here, <laughs> and it is like broadcast fucking sunglasses, <laughs> gurning his lips <laughs> forwards, <laughs> <laughs> and the fedora just just ties it all together. He's clearly he just really some, he's just some fucking nerd. <laughs> oh my god. Lupino wasn't in his cheap hotel. Instead, I ran into the Finito brothers. My cover had been blown, the door slammed shut behind me, and then I was dodging bullets like raindrops. Pain in the butt. In the hotel. Ah, pain to the max. Junk squad kick. Got a ticket of Marvel City for you. Eat first and lying down. Shit. Oh my god, I'm still a Kahimis. That would have killed me. <laughs> Does that count as a boss fight? Nope. Damn it. Nope, oh, these are just two little enemies. The desk caught my eye. Um, it's okay, so let's look at this room, shall we, for a second? Everything alright? Mm -hmm. Oh, shit. Joey, 
Okay, you know what? We'll deal with this first. I had met Lupino only once. The gangster ran all his rackets through his right-hand man, Vinny Gagnidi. Gagnidi was a high-strung whiner on the verge of breaking apart, like an overamped Energizer bunny. He had the brains to run the business, but he lacked the balls, always falling short, taking his frustration out on underage addicts and call girls. The V deal goes down at your hotel. Jack's exact words, quote, Vinny, you're in charge of this one, unquote. Rico Muerte is coming to see you through. Anything goes wrong and everybody's gonna get dead. Goes double for you. Treat this guy real good. Anything he wants, you give him. Don't screw this up or you're finito, finitos. A V deal meant added security. <laughs> you loving doors, this? Lots of nervous thugs with itchy trigger fingers. So I'd seen nothing coming in, but that didn't mean it hadn't been there. Rico Muerte was a regular Kaiser Sosa, a spook story told to keep the apes in line. 313. The finitos had scribbled Muerte's room number on the notes margin. So, going in with the photos thing again, um, these two images here, at the very least, are clearly in-engine pictures that have then been, had the filters added. This is just Max's model. Um, yeah. So they're not all photos, and sometimes it's, if you, if you're not looking too closely, and again, I imagine, at, you know, on a CRT at 768p um, in 2001, maybe not as noticeable. Um... But here in, you know, 1440p, it's a hell of a lot more noticeable. But again, I'm looking for it, right? I know this is here like this, so that's why I'm able to point it out. It's the effects and the kind of smearing that they put over everything does help hide that. Quite well. A V dealman added security, yeah, yeah. locked doors, lots of. A V dealman. Oh, come on! <laughs> there we go. So this is Vinny Gogniti here on the wall. Who we've been sort of introduced to. There he is. Oh shit. <laughs> Look at my health. You're doing fine. It does regenerate a little bit if you're like really close to death. But only a little bit. It gets you like your shampoo, you know, head and shoulders. These guys were keeping painkillers in a safe. <laughs> like, I want, I want to make, I want that to be a thing now. We're just going to make note of all the weird places people are keeping their painkillers because this is not normal. Well, the first place we found them, and you're like, why would they need them here? I mean, headaches on the job, you know. Like, that's fine. That was in a safe. No, that's weird. No, no, the first place we found it was like in a locker room. Makes sense. That place where I pointed it out was like a power control room for the trains right okay, but like if you're locked in there all day you know trains going by that's gonna give you a headache who is this is this kong whiskey i don't think it's i don't think it's readable we can I assume that's kong, kong whiskey. whiskey yeah that's a, they went ape on us you know um yeah yeah of course all right um, i'm actually gonna save uh, oh yeah yeah um, I'm gonna overwrite all my old saves uh, because there's bullshit, and I seem to remember dying once or twice in this level. Getting out was not gonna be easy. The staircase was locked, and the elevator had been busted for a decade or more. Mm -hmm. uh, let's use this. So again, you get to interact with everything, even the sex bed. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. All right, so throughout the game, um, there's sort of optional. There's a lot of optional cutscenes thrown around. Um, these radios. It, the thing that we hear now is the same thing that they always play. It's just generic things like MIPD, Deputy Chief Jim Bravora, like that. Yeah. So, but we listen to it. In his press conference today. The mayor stated that Valkyr represents a clear danger to New York and called for drastic actions to eliminate the problem. On today's top story, the Valkyr crisis worsens with the murder of DEA Special Agent Alex Balder. Special Agent Balder had been shot repeatedly from a point-blank range. The gunman has been identified as Max Payne. The noose is sure to tighten around this fugitive criminal as more NYPD units join the search to apprehend him. I had just gotten my 15 minutes of fame. So, we've been framed. We watched our friend die, and now the NYPD are after us as well as the mob. 
Actually, I don't know if you heard what he said. Uh, you've been famed for 15 minutes. <laughs> all right, folks, that's the stream. Um, I hope you all... <laughs> point is is as he's saying the noose is tightening um or as the radio said the noose is tightening around his neck the walls are closing in right he has no friends now he is on his own mm -hmm. and he wants revenge for so his wife was murdered by valkyr junkies so he wants revenge for that he wants to put valkyr you know he wants to get rid of valkyr that's that was why he's a dea agent his best friend and partner one of the people that knew he was an undercover dea agent is dead um and he watched it happen but doesn't know who killed him um, all he knows is that it likely has some connection, maybe, to the Lupino crime family, who he is undercover as part of. Now the Lupino crime family know he's undercover, and his cover's been his cover's been broken, busted. He's got nothing. He's on his own in New York, and every fucker with a gun wants his head. You have a good time at work, Bird. It was fun seeing you around. Oh yeah. Feel free to catch the vod later when we upload that to YouTube. And Bird, thank you for being the 69th follower of this channel. It's really nice of you. <laughs> That's so great. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah, something's um, wrong with the bosses. Payne's there and they're not answering. Let's go already. Payne's gonna pay in spades. <laughs> Do these ones blow up? I don't think they are. Oh. It's sort of unintentional. Uh, yeah, well, it's intentionally done, of course, but sort of like nothing there was funny, but it was so hilarious. To the me. way the way he went flying was certainly certainly oh, good. Not that it was the you know Payne's gonna pay to immediately then get followed right with a shot from Payne. <laughs> yeah, no, that's it's good shit. That's so well the done. like the mo the the mob in this are definitely the um the comic relief a lot of the time. Um, mm -hmm. and they're, they're, they're in a lot of this game. Um, like I said, they're just, they the best mooks, the best, like, Italian mob mooks you'll ever see. Apparently, yeah. I love them. Really getting vibes of, uh, you know, God, I can't remember their names, but the, the characters from Home Alone. Oh, the, the, the Wet Bandits. Yeah. Vin is it, it Marv the, the and Vince? Bandits. Sticky Bandits was Home Alone 2. The they, they were the Wet Bandits yeah, in the Marv... first one. Yeah, Marv and then Harry. Harry and Marv. Harry and Marv, yeah. Oh, wow. This is why I saved. Um... <laughs> <laughs> nope, that's not what I want. Uh, this one. There you go. There you go. I told you, this game throws bullshit at you, and you can die in like one shot sometimes. Uh, luckily, I don't need that cutscene, so I can just. That. Yeah, something's wrong with the bosses. Hey, what the hell? Oh, oh, right the window. oh. Shit, gotta reload. There we go. <laughs> is there anything in here? Or is this just for shits and giggles? Okay. Boxes. Uh, and you know, as as you're going through this, this this does remind me of something I was talking to a friend about pretty recently. And on the topic of, you know, in-game characters, right? And this yeah. is, this is going to be a weird point of discussion, but I think with this game specifically, it really shines well. Um, the games where they don't actually give you a main character, they sort of give you, like, a, uh, a fold to put yourself into, if you will. A very, like, generic kind of character. It doesn't say much or anything at all, right? Mm -hmm. And we were talking about the pros and cons of having a both named and voiced character versus a character that's just kind of, you know, filling whatever role Golden that Freeman. the player might want them to fill. Right. Oh, yeah. bag of chips. Yeah. Oh, and a candy bar. Candy bar. That's it. It's empty. Um, and I, I think I'm of the opinion that basically without exception, there, I'm sure there's a handful of exceptions out there, but games where they give you a named character and tell you, here's who you are, mm. here's where you are, here's your motivation, it sort of feels more, really more interesting, because right. you can take a character without a name in a game, like a nameless, faceless, whatever character that you want to play. Uh, yeah. A good example would be uh, Far Cry 5, Previously, the uh, deputy you play as. Shit, one sec, sorry. 
Yeah. Something everyone show here, and unfortunately it can't be paused. Oh, fuck. We're gonna say much to you. My lady. My lord. My lady, there is a matter of great importance I must bring to your attention. My lord, there is? Indeed, my lady, there is indeed. From the very first moment we met, upon that distant forest path, there has been sunlight in the autumn leaves blazing like the colors of your hair. Oh, my lord, you should not speak so. But, my lady, I must, I must. My lord, no, I forbid you. This cannot be, this must not be. But why, my love, why? My lord. It is too dreadful. Do not force me to speak the words. My lady, I beg of you, I must know. I would rather die than not know. Yes, my lord, we should both be dead, for this shame is too great for the living. My lord, I am... My lord, I am your long-lost sister. <laughs> what? <laughs> okay. Um, there's not many TVs in this game that do that have like a thing like that. There's like three or four. Um, but they're all magical. <laughs> what a twist. I apologize uh, for, like, interrupting you there, but I had fine, to. You're fine, you're fine. That, that's so fucking good. Um, but it, 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 in short, the conversation came down to, in video games, would you rather them make it a very generic character? The head jokies could go off without a warning. Into? I had to be careful. Or a named character that you kind of have to try to find common ground with. And I think a majority of the time, I prefer the main character. And the reason why is if you take an unnamed character, again, mm -hmm. Far Cry 5 Deputy, if you give them lines or a personality, suddenly they become more real to the world. And I think it's an improvement. Right. But if you take a named character who already has dialogue, let's say Max Payne. Yeah. Remove half his dialogue from the game and you're missing out on a lot of Max Payne. Yeah, but I think, for me, it, I think it definitely depends on the game. Um, with with a character like this, it doesn't give you space for any kind of exploration, right? Um, Max Payne's path is set. We There's a beginning, a middle, and end to this story, and we know how it goes, and Max Payne as a character fits into that as, as a part of that narrative, as a, a fundamental part of that narrative, um, but a part of it. But if a game has a more open narrative or wants you to explore themes and ideas, having a character who is more of a blank slate enables you to do that because you no longer have to worry about what's Max Payne, what would Max Payne do in this setting? You don't have to think about that. You have to think about what would my character that I'm deciding that fate do in that situation, right? Um, and I think a lot of games seriously benefit from that. Um, far, you know, games like Far Cry, sure, you, you don't need... You don't need um, uh, a blank slate character you can absolutely go with like a, a fairly linearly written character who has their own characterization and you know has been carefully curated by a professional um but in something like let's say fallout or you know any of the D, &D rpgs mm -hmm. we benefit a lot more from having your own character because you make that character who they are you choose what kind of person they are and while okay sure we might get, not get voice acting or if we do, we end up with a Fallout 4 situation where it isn't great. Um, mm -hmm. We still get written lines that help flavor that character, that help bring your ideas for what that character should be to life. And that helps a lot with those kinds of games. In a game that is trying to be open and, you know, importantly, where you're trying to play a role, a role-playing game, if you will. Um, you <laughs> It really helps, and it's, it allows you to put yourself in the shoes of whatever kind of character you like. You can enter it and say, you know what, I'm going to explore um, sadism. I'm going to explore being an actually sadistic, merciless piece of shit. And I can't do that in Max Payne. I can't do that necessarily with a, you know, a Boy Scout character that was written for Far Cry. I know, I know the Far Cry protagonists aren't Boy Scout characters, but I'm just... Giving that as, a, as an example, you yeah, know, yeah. It, it prevents you from really realizing that kind of exploration and that that kind of thing helps. I think Max Payne, you're right, definitely benefits from having its character, but that it also is because this game has a set narrative. You're not, you're not, oh shit, oh fuck. You're not um necessarily engaging with this game's themes in a meaningful way or exploring them, right? You're just sort of... um. 
you, you you're just sort of taking them as they are and you, you know you're you're, in, you're engaging with them in the same way that you would with a movie or a book right we're not mm -hmm. we're not personally sort of like going oh you know is is revenge a, a dish best served cold or would i rather have it heated up in the microwave and we're not like <laughs> we're not we're not in in our gameplay we're not exploring that in our gameplay we're gunning fuckers down right <laughs> yeah so that, that that's why I don't I don't think it matters too much here and why I, why I think having the preset character of Max Payne is beneficial in the same way that you wouldn't want a movie that has a blank slate character with no characterization right <laughs> that makes sense I didn't think about it from that angle I will say my personal taste I think goes more for the curated aspect yeah for sure I think I'm I'm in a similar boat to you as well. Is I think of like a good example, right? For me, is I think of something like Skyrim, where, I mean, true, you could just kind of like ignore the base plotline of the game and what it is, but it's like still kind of an important part of the game. The whole like, oh, you're the Dragonborn, ooh, all that fun jazz. Right. And it, it it is sort of in my mind kind of disappointing to go well. They could have made something really cool about being the Dragonborn and what that means, but instead they kind of just said, here's a big open world with not a whole lot in it, do what you want. <laughs> yeah. Oh, hey. Um, back on Max Payne, though. I mean, I, I'll be real, I didn't expect to see a dude on a, um, a vibrating bed today. Uh, just dead like that. I don't know about him. he's dead or tripping out? I don't know about... He's dead. He's, there's blood everywhere. <laughs> oh. I don't know, I don't know about him, but i tell you what, I'm, I'm shaken. <laughs> I'll be here all day, folks. All right. This party had been dead for a while. I couldn't say I was sorry I'd missed the show. All right, we got uh, more news. Tonight, the city's fight against the nightmare drug Valkyr took a turn for the worse as DEA Special Agent Alex Balder was found brutally slain at the Roscoe Street subway station. A suspect was seen leaving the site only moments after the shots had been fired, and the NYPD is currently in pursuit of Max Payne, a repeated felon believed to be armed and extremely dangerous. And now the weather. The worst winter storm in recorded history continues to pound the city. So once again, we get a... Uh, maybe not the most professional looking face here from Max. <laughs> again, these people aren't actors. We have a, a Valkyr addict who's uh. You're gonna die. You're gonna die. Wait. Wait. Yo, six leave, bro. Wait. I don't know. <laughs> Did he say know. one sec? I don't know. You're gonna die. You're gonna die. No, they don't, don't say the line. Okay. I don't know. I don't know. Sorry, I thought they were saying a line that was like referenced in Max Payne 2. They, they, they weren't. I just. But yeah, this is this is what happens when you're on Valkyr. They're quite jumpy, they're hallucinating, they're going through a really bad time. And this is... That reminds me of heroin. Kind, it, it, Valkyr is definitely, like, kind of uh, reminiscent of heroin. Definitely wants to give you that idea. It's not quite heroin. I mean, the hallucinations for one, but also heroin doesn't make you jumpy. It makes you sleepy. And the jumpiness is quite key to it here. Oh, shit. oh my god. Just dodge that man's shotgun. Yeah. Um, do I have grenades yet? I don't have grenades yet. Okay, I got Molotovs, that helps a little bit. Um, yeah. uh, fun fact Molotov. Like Molotov cocktails are named after the man yeah. Molotov. Yeah. I found more to his room. <laughs> what? Fuck, I forgot about that. Well, we've got to do all that again. <laughs> no! <laughs> I completely. Okay, I'll rush this. I completely forgot about that. Fuck. I was too busy listening to you, and I was like, I, I was like, yes, I know this fact. I he was. Yeah. Yeah. Russian, like, uh, Secretary of Defense or something like that, um, during World War II? Uh, I believe so, yes. 
Different group. Stalin's in a circle. Like good stuff. I believe he was Finnish. Was he? No, 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 no. Yeah. The, no, the Finnish. No, he was Russian. Um, the Finnish called the Molotov cocktails because they were like, you know, a, re oh, a return right, right, right. to Molotov. Like, hey, yes, drink this. Um, but it, it was the Finnish who, who coined the phrase, oh. certainly. A little too hasty on this. Previous on Lords and Ladies. Lady uh, Amelia, Marquis Valentine asks for an audience. Thank you, Lord. Painkillers. I swear I'm always gonna be looking for painkillers everywhere I can. New episode of Lords and Ladies brought to you in part by the head junkies could go off without a warning. I had to be careful. Are you able to shoot the junkies? Yeah. I generally don't, because there's no reason to, but you can. Yeah. I was going to say, that just made me kind of sad. <laughs> yeah, thank you for that. Figured if I was going to ruin someone's day, it shouldn't be my own. Uh-huh. Fuck, oh, you see how much damage that shotgun does? Yeah, it wow, is it's, it's almost like it's a shotgun or something. Yeah, no, you, you die in one hit to those. Just gotta be really careful with my health. Whack him! Whack this sucker! It's just like being back in Illinois for you. <laughs> oh, much like, yes. <laughs> right, I'm not doing too well on my health, but I am going to save her. So I don't have to do all that again. There we go. Good idea. Amelia, so tragic. Will they ever get together? I think I'm dead. He's watching Lords and Ladies, I just realized. Hey, buddy. Right out now. They won't attack you, but if you, unless you hurt them, so there's, there's no reason. Again, I like his tattoo sleeve. Got him dead. Fuck. Sorry, dude. Oh, it's bad. Oh, hello. Oh, I'm dead. I'm not. Sword of shotgun really let me down here. And every time I do a shoot dodge, thankfully, it it reloads the gun for me. So it's like a little, oh my goodness, <laughs> a little uh, cheaty cheat right there that you can use. A little um, uh, exploit. Yeah, <laughs> it's really it's intended. I think it is super useful. I found more to his room. So you'll notice one thing here that we don't get in the rest of the game: music. Oh. There's not a lot of music in this game, it's very sparsely Point used. received a letter. But it is used to sort of, um... Uh, what's the term? Uh, enhance certain scenes or draw your attention to them. It's really good. I appreciate games that sparsely use music. Yeah, Half-Life is another one that does it in a similar way, where it just kind of elevates certain yeah, parts of the game. Housing, yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. Very sparse. Yeah, yeah. Our investigation had turned up nothing to link Angelo Punchinello, the head of the Punchinello family, to Valkyr. All tracks had ended with Jack Lupino. The letter in Muerte's room was signed by the Don himself. It was the first hint that the Kingpin knew what was brewing inside his syndicate. The trouble you got into after the Chicago screw-up. The Punchinello family bailed you out. You have been waiting for a chance to pay us back. One of our trusted boys has a monkey the size of King Kong on his back. We need your special skills for backup on a major deal. Collecting evidence had gotten old a few hundred bullets back. I was already so far past the point of no return, I couldn't even remember what it looked like when I had passed it. In case you had ever had any doubt that after all these people he'd killed, Max... Max was still a, a serious cop who's very serious about his job. He's not. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's well behind him. Fuck. How am I alive? Oh. 
No, sorry, had to. He got hit by the shotgun. Sorry, buddy. Um, I'd like to also uh, re uh, uh, clarify something I said a moment ago. It wasn't that I appreciate games that use music sparsely. I appreciate games that use music very intentionally. Right. Yeah. yeah. Sparse music just happens to usually fall in line with intentional use. Uh, is there a reason I'm out here? Oh. I don't remember why I'm out here, but I know that I am out here. It's fine. It's fine. We saved recently. Reasonably, uh... Compared to the last one. Whack this sucker! Whack this sucker. Oh. You're loving that, aren't you? Oh. <laughs> Where's the shotgun dude? Every use of the word there whack is. in terms of murder. Love it. Fuck. <laughs> Do not know how he missed. I'm very happy that he did, though. So imagine we were trying to talk about this game and play it on a higher difficulty. Yeah, no, forget that. Fuck all of that. Check that every time, and it's never going to be I open. found Muerte's room. Yeah. Muerte had received a letter. Yeah, there's a letter. Let's skip it. Yeah, beautiful. Anything else in here? I don't remember. No, painkiller. Ammunition of some kind, shotgun, okay. Alright, cool. Game gives you a lot of ammo. Gives you enough. Oh yeah, there's a dude what in here. The... Not again. Game gives you a lot of ammo. Attic. It's an action game. It doesn't want you to it it's balanced pretty well. It you don't have to worry about ammo, but you do like you will run out out of ammo on particular guns at times, meaning that you don't always have everything available to you. Hmm. Uh, which is something I do I do appreciate. Yeah. Let's not walk backwards. I didn't want to know what had happened here. It was not a pretty sight. What does that say? Buff? Bull? Bull? I see. Bun? Oh, Buffy! Buffy? He's got a stake in his heart. Oh. Okay, come on, Mike. She can do this. Buffy? Buffy... Vampire Slayer. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. It's it's a it's a Buffy the Vampire Slayer reference. Yeah. It, I I didn't get it either until I saw like the stake in his back. It's like, oh, he's writing Buffy. Man, that dates this game. All right. Um... Yeah. It wasn't obvious that it dated. That I struggled knowing what that was. <laughs> back when people liked Joss Whedon. <laughs> Just gonna save again. Uh, there we go. Save again. Yeah. Are you about to mow through some cops now? No. Um, spoilers, you never kill a single cop in this game. Whack! Whack! <laughs> yeah, no, you don't you don't kill any cops in this game. Okay. And this well, is good. pure copaganda. Um <laughs> What the Oh. Told you. God damn! I thought it was a bomb for sure. Nah, don't rush you. <laughs> yeah, this has been waiting to happen. <laughs> I thought it was a bomb. <laughs> They're all so happy. It's not a bomb. Yeah. It, it's worse. I wanted to switch weapon, but it decided to fire. Okay. Well, let's give him a bomb. What the? Oh, God. <laughs> he was worried it was a bomb. <laughs> The hooker had left her diary on the table. Ooh, ooh, this is actually an important one. Um, ooh. let's read her diary. Yeah. The diary belonged to a hooker named Candy Dawn. The read would have made a vice cop blush. Had talks with the mystery hag over the phone again. Sent to the latest one-eyed Alfred tape. As long as the hag keeps paying for the tapes, the old man could come every day for all I care. She had a nice sideline. 
making secret X-rated flicks of her clients and selling them to the highest bidder. They would get her killed if her V-fix for the day didn't do it first. That diary is unironically one of the most important cutscenes in the game. You're kidding. It's not okay. It's not crazy important, but it does um, establish some characters that we don't know about yet. Um, she mentioned the mystery hag on the phone and one-eyed Alfred. Um, yep. Those are two of the most important characters in this whole game. Wow. And we don't see them until at least the second half. But she's um, oh, she's making videos, some videos. She's she's ahead of her time. Only fans in um in the age of <laughs> in the age of VHS. You think she could send these to AFV? AFV? Oh, America's Funniest Videos. Yeah. Um. <laughs> God, you know something tells me they're more sad than funny, but I don't know. Uh, you know what? You make a good point. Okay, thanks, game. That was a good sound effect. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, shit, I've got to remember where to go now. Uh, it's not out the window, I don't think. Is it through here? Oh, yeah, it's through here. Okay. Oh, fuck. Christ. Tim, go get him. No, wait, you go get him. You go and get him. <laughs> God. So you see how like you know the time it takes you to get up really if you're not in cover when you when you get up. I took three shots. Um you can lose all your health. Do I really want to be Was using he that? the boss fight? No. <laughs> nope. I could have shot this as well. And that I don't know if that would have done something. But I could have shot it. Um <laughs> Interactable world, everyone enjoys that. The old hmm. service elevator rumbled down to the bowels of Jack Lapino's hotel. Alright. It's aesthetically chapter four. So um it, we've been going for quite a while, so do you want to take a quick break? I would not mind that at all. Awesome. Alright, folks, we're gonna take a very brief break just to get up, stretch our legs, get a drink, all that wonderful Human stuff. Things. Yeah, human things. Um, while we're away, there will be a brief um, ad break. Um, don't worry, it will be over before we get back, so you will not miss a thing. So stick Nicole? around, folks. Uh, that's Jess. That's my fiance. <laughs> Thank you for the follow, Jess. <laughs> <laughs> what took you so long? Uh, yeah, bobbity boopy. <laughs> bobbity boopy. All right, folks. Um, yeah, back in just a minute. Stick around. Hey folks, we're back. Thank you for being patient. Uh, let's get back into some Max Payne. Oh, I did not unmute. Oops. Hey, right, we're back. You there, Max? Uh, no, I'm not. Ah, okay. shit. Well, we gotta wait for Max, guys. Sorry. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, just. Okay, I'm back. Oh, okay, Max is back. All right, let's. Get... <laughs> oh god. Do you think people actually watch this? <laughs> Oh, I don't care. It's fun to do. That's uh -huh. what matters. Yeah. It'll be a good way to expose each other to games that, you know... That's what I like about it, honestly. I'm in love with Max Payne so far. <laughs> it's a great game. I wonder if I could get a Molotov in that. <laughs> what was that? Did you see that? Wow. Holy shit. Hell yeah. And oh, Jess, thank you for the thank you for the donation. I appreciate it. You could just send me that money in real life, but you sure donate the Twitch. Why not? No, don't, don't donate. A winter to storm warning now. is in effect in the whole tri state area <laughs> as both freezing rain and heavy snowfall continue. Many roadways are already closed, and people are advised to stay indoors. The severe blizzard has ravaged New York for three days now, with no end in sight. We've been snowed from the start in the Valkyr case. 
The forecast said there was plenty more where that had come from. But the snowbound city was on my side. Less chance of innocent bystanders getting caught in the crossfire. Alright, and yeah, Jess, I'll, I, I, I will read it out. Um, the donation message that Jess put was, Hey, I'm walking here! I'm yeah. walking here! <laughs> I appreciate it, though, Jess. Thank you. I will say in the in the break we just took, I went and fed my cat, mm -hmm. and now she's bothering me because I didn't sit next to her and she ate it. Well, that's just rude of you, man. Clearly, I am a terrible enemy. Honestly, person. you should have that cat taken away from you. You don't deserve her. Oh. <laughs> 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 uh, not. <laughs> about spending ammo at all. I I do, um, and then I don't. Thing is, I don't know if any of these boxes have stuff in, or if I even need it. But I have to break them because they might. It's the unknown. Yeah, no! Oh, this room. Exhibit number one: a newspaper. Yo, there's a rat. A yes. dead man tied to a chair lay on the boiler room floor. Captain Baseball Bat Boy has an unbeatable track record in superhero death matches. <laughs> but a six pack of root beer gets me every time. The murder weapon was a baseball bat, now lying in a pool of drying blood next to a newspaper folded open on a Captain Baseball Bat Boy comic strip. So this is um this is foreshadowing. Um without getting too specific, uh, we come back here later. And uh yeah, it ain't pretty. Take vampire movies. Why right. are they always set in LA or Mexico? They can't even get a tan. If I was a bloodsucker, I'd move to the North Pole. Went this one long night. Yeah, and what would you eat? Suck blood from penguins? Nah, Eskimos, man. Eskimos. Uh, so those are the Inuit people, or Inuks, individually. Uh, so that's kind of racist, guys. Not yeah. cool. This, these are not based Italian mobsters. Uh, yeah, clearly not. Secondly, what I do find funny is a few years after this game, I want to say 2005, 2006, a movie came out called 30 Days of Night, which was exactly that. It was vampires in the North Pole. Oh. <laughs> Specifically Alaska. I think, I think it was, like, Alaska, but because, like, winter, it, you know, the sun sets and doesn't come back up for, like, a full month. Um, it's a great... It's a it's, it, good... Good setup for a vampire movie. You just got thirty days of fucking vampires just going, you know, roaming about. Um, yeah. It's an okay sure. film. It's not amazing, but it's it's, it's okay. Uh, just redeemed a hydrate. Oh, I forgot that. Oh no, I did refill my drink. I will I will drink that in just a moment after I kill these mooks. Oh shit! Unless they kill me. Oh my god. What is this? No! Oh, please, please, just. Die. Oh my god. Oh. I'm gonna drink my drink. I'm gonna hide. I was not hydrated. That's that was the problem, you know. That's the problem. When a hydrate hits, do we both need to hydrate? It's it's you don't have to. I'm gonna. I know they I know they pay their precious bits, but you don't actually have to hydrate. Okay. I do <laughs> hydrate because it's there and it's a good reminder. And as I said, I'm like a human Tamagotchi. I will forget to just feed myself unless someone tells me to. <laughs> Might as well get one that just says go to the toilet because that's the only way I'll remember. Oh, he survived! Son of a bitch. Cheeky wee cunt. Alright. Uh, I'm gonna stick with the dual brasses. This this uh, sword off shotgun is really letting me down. Yeah. Maybe, how many desert eagle? I've got quite a few desert eagle rounds actually. You don't get a lot of them, it's a good gun. And pretty accurate. Oh shit, I'm out of bullet time. That's another reason why you don't really use the, um, just the normal, like, walk around bullet time in this game, because, um, yeah, it can be pretty bad, like, how quickly it goes you away. You always bullet time when you go for a leap. Uh, yeah. So, um, I can't right now, because I don't actually have enough bullet time in my gauge, but if I was to do it normally, then yes. I can, actually, I can press space to do it, um, though I never do. Um because space won't okay. do the bullet time, but I, I never do that. There's no reason to, it's just... When you're not in bullet time, you're not going to dodge those bullets. Um, so, just don't try. What? 
You can still lock people in this game, thankfully. Exhibit number one, a newspaper. Low poly rats! They're good rats. Yo! I wish you can't pet them, sadly. Ugh. Bad game, zero out of ten can pet the rat. Sometimes, don't just don't get fancy with it. Um. You don't need to every time. You, know? you, you get bullet time back for killing people as well, so that's um, mm. you, you know that that's how you get it back. So if if you do kill people while you're leaping and stuff like that, it'll always be full, um, which is why doing the bullet dodge dodges is kind of the best way of doing it. But um, you know, if if you do want to do the whole down the rest. Rest. do you want to know? Oh, it hurt my heart, but yeah. I've never okay. I've never tried, so I don't know. I. I love rats. I'm so sorry, bud. You can shoot the rats. Look what you made me do. Well, at least it has immersion. Made me massacre my boy. Shoot with the guns. A beautiful baby boy. boy. Gentlemen, let's do business. Greed for greed. Cheers at green eyed angels. Amen. Something going on behind here. A deal of sorts. Mm. I... Oh shit. Uh. Guys do make a death sound when you kill them, which is actually really nice feedback, so you know you can start a shooting the next ago, guy. This would have gone down as a narcotics arrest. The transparent cylinders glowed green, full of Valkyr. It was dirty money. Dirty money. <laughs> Sounds like someone needs to take that money to the laundromat. So, I'm a little concerned because I don't have a lot of health and I know what's coming next. Um, but uh, we'll, we'll do up. Oh, there's a key. There is a key on the table. That's a... <laughs> Boy, howdy, is that a key? <laughs> <laughs> I've seen some ornate keys. We still use a lot of like old-fashioned keys in in the UK. Um, you know, I've I've dealt New with them. York? Um, New York probably does. You know, places built in the fall. Uh, you know, New York's an old city, right? Um, I have never in my life, save for like a church, seen a key that fucking big. <laughs> It's as big as a magazine. I think that's yeah, the that, yeah, that's that's huge, and it's just like everything else in this game. Like, okay, one sec. Look at the guns; they're pretty well modeled for two thousand and one, right? Yeah. Look at that. Like, look at this key. <laughs> it leaves shells on the ground. You leave your magazines on the ground. Look at this key. <laughs> At least it's 3D, I guess, but look at this key! I can't wait for you to interact with it. It starts a cutscene and he picks up, like, a tiny, regular-ass house. Here's a, here's a fun, um, here's a fun little Easter egg. Uh, Max Heat was the working title of this game. One of the working oh. titles, and the other one was Dick Justice. I... <sighs> Max Payne was in, an, in, in another life would have been called Dick Justice, or Max Heat. What about Dick Heat? No. No, no, definitely not Dick Heat. Um, that's that's not a good one. Gonna save the game. <laughs> oh my god. Dick Heat. Dick Heat, yeah. Dick Heat. I think that's I think I think a hooker gave me Dick Heat last week. Um, <laughs> Doctor gave me a cream for it. Uh, okay. Hey guys, you know when you go to the bathroom and you feel something. <laughs> All right, that's um. Speaking of hookers and dick heat. Yeah. Two mad dog killers ready to murder each other. They step into the next room, and I'm thinking, now they're gonna do it. Mm -hmm. But no, they sit down in front of a TV and solve their differences. With the kung fu fighting video game. I tell you, Candy, 
I was so depressed, I strangled them both with the video game cables. Oh, Rico, you're so bad. I am, ain't I? Mm, mm. Real case of dick heat right Rico now. Rico Muerte, <laughs> big time hustler. Who the hell? It's that cop. Muerte went for his gun. This is a boss fight. Boss fight! I think he found himself in some max heat right there. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's okay, I saved beforehand, but I was not expecting that to hit the wall. <laughs> oh dear. Are there any more in here? No. Alright. Gosh. Okay, I'm gonna skip the Tool. blow job. Um, That far enough. Does that really not get her? Oh, that's annoying. Oh yeah, this dude. I remember this. How to deal with this? Don't need to get too fancy with it. Um. All right, let's try this Molotov again. And this time without setting myself on fire, please. There we go. Fight ain't over. Uh, Doesn't seem to be. Oh, use it as an eagle. So... Okay, I do love this guy's uh, pants around his legs. Oh. <laughs> there we go. That's it. Um, they're just really tanky, um, and they they tend to use really powerful weapons. But they just like this guy. I was able to stun lock some of them. You can't. I don't think you can stun lock Jack Lupino. But um, first boss, not too difficult. But um, I've I've died a lot of that fight. I did get his gun though, um, and used all the ammo in it right there. <laughs> So uh, that's the Ingram, which is a weapon that we'll be using more in the later game, um, but it's... The antique switchboard was still in use. Um, we'll use it whenever we can, really, because it's just, like, probably the highest DPS in the game. There was an old telephone switchboard in the back room of the reception area, the kind that made phone tapping child's play. It wasn't hard to picture a fat pimp sweating with headphones on, listening to his hookers talk dirty and fake orgasms over a web of party lines the blood veins of New York. Right now, there was a different set of moans and groans going on. Boss, I got nearly as Max Payne. It came, started capitals. He killed uh... Are you freaking kidding me? It's just one lousy cop. You better be freaking kidding me. Whack him. What's the freaking problem? Hello? Answer me. Hello? The word was out. A deadly virus released into the city's corrupt circulatory system. Something wicked this way comes. Max Payne at large. Oh my god. <laughs> I love that. So, we're getting a little bit into this now, and we were talking earlier about the Max Payne movie and how it's not a great movie. Um, no. Do you understand what I mean now by saying that, like, there was a good Max Payne movie and it was called John Wick? Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Yeah. You can you can see sort of how like if you were gonna do a Max Payne movie, that's how you'd do it. Oh shit! So so. Hundred percent. Go around there, I think. I will say one thing I need to point out before we go too far into this, right? Yeah. I can't stop hearing, like the um in, in the sound effect in the cutscenes. There's this there's this small audio sound that plays hmm. every once in a while. And I swear to God, it's just the sound that they use on Shark Tank to build tension. You're gonna have to point it out. I will. It's only in the cutscenes, it seems. Okay. There it 
regular pistol just seems to do so much to you. Yeah, you take a lot of damage in this game. You are just a dude, but you are also hopped up on painkillers. <laughs> I think I remember there being people down here. Oh, I'm going to have to jump down first. But I'm actually going to save again, because I don't want to do that boss fight again. Um, old games, no checkpointing, so... Can I jump through here? Nope, got to shoot. Oh, rare music again. Fuck, this is bad. Okay, this is not too bad. He's using the Ingram, the same gun that the boss was using. Oh. Um, it's it's a fully automatic weapon, but that's how they're firing it. It's like kind of bursts. Uh, man, I am not doing well. All right. It's the end of this level, I think. No. Oh, right. Yeah. Duh. Gotta open the door from here. Turn around, walk away, blow town. That would have been the smart thing to do. Guess I wasn't that smart. Lupino's tenement buildings were a seedy hangout for all kinds of sleaze. A liquor store, a pawn shop, a laundromat full of mobster bookies and loan sharks. The list went on. The how and why of it was a mystery to me, but they knew I was a cop. They knew I was coming, and they were going to get real trigger happy about it. Good lighting there in that last Lupino's panel. Hang out all lit up. Oh, yeah. A bomb went off, turning snow into liquid gold. A pillar of fire lifted the remains of a car straight up into the air. The flames were highlighted on the hood of a black Mercedes Benz as it coasted down the street real slow, as if the driver didn't have a worry in the world. I got a good look at the man riding shotgun. It was Vladimir, the head of the local Russian mob, the fly in Don Punchinello's suit. The ringing in my ears was the sound of a mob war being waged. <laughs> what a license plate. Vodka. And you, you okay, you can tell they're finished because it's a European style license plate. Um, wow, yeah. Only just occurred to me that, but yeah, it's a. Um, it's not an American style uh, license plate. Another bomb exploded inside the closest slum building. It was a lucky break. The goons inside were spooked, but luck always came with a price tag. More bombs could still be ticking inside, and the cops would already be on their way. Jack Lupino's suite was on the top floor. At least it used to be, before the explosive makeover. Another, <laughs> another downside of uh, older games is your health persists through levels, and God, it really fucking holds you back in this game sometimes. Like, right now, I'm just- I, I need my painkillers. I need my fix, man. I don't know, man. Need my fix. I, I don't know about this. Quit worrying, man. Think of it as Christmas. The Russians are with Santa. But, okay, like, can we just, like, appreciate this, like, this alley, this street? <clears throat> this- Very good. Yeah, I like this. I- it, there's an atmosphere here to this. I really like this. It's Sorry, does it say chair communications? Uh... Choir communications. Choir. Oh my god, I read that it's chair. <laughs> <laughs> Got like a yeah, you know, a little bodega over here. Oh. It does pizza? Of course it does. Free delivery apparently. Cold beer and soda. Can you? Can like uh, convenience stores sell beer in in New York? I know it's different in like every yeah. in every state. Okay. Yeah, they do. Cigarettes, candy. When I was oh, there, there was like a. When 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 I was there for like a month and a half, I was there. Um, hello, cat. I remember the place I was staying. Like, literally, the next building over had one of those deli grocery places just like that that you were just seeing. Yeah. Except it was like built into the ground. It was so weird. Oh, okay, cool. 
Yeah, but yeah, they sold liquor. They sold like weird deli stuff that yeah I wouldn't trust with a ten foot pole. <laughs> I love that stuff. What the? Oh shit! Oh, I'm out of bullet time. Yeah. Okay. That that was that was terrible. Uh, luckily, the game does Jack also Lupino's save was on the between top floor. levels. At least it uh, used to be before the explosive nade. Try the sword off shotgun this time. I don't know, man. Yo! Come on down. That's you. Sometimes it's just kind of a puzzle where you just gotta figure out like what the best way of approaching any situation is. Um, I've seen it compared to Hotline Miami in that way, where sometimes you just gotta try it in, in a variety of different ways to find out what works. Um, mm -hmm. That would be okay if this game had checkpointing of some kind. Yeah. Um, it really can be punishing if you just forget to save, because you can go, like, some levels can go quite long, and you can go pretty far through it, and, like, you know, just get through by the skin of your teeth, and then get whacked, and it's like, oh, well, okay, gotta do that whole level again, so save Whack it, em, boys. Yeah. so the old Sierra Games adage of, um, save early, save often, really applies here. Yeah, it does. The headlines were a depressing read. Let's read the newspaper. DEA DOA. Valkyr. Murder. Max Payne. Killer. The headlines were screaming bloody murder. The story yeah, it was in high resolution. The approaching prowl car sirens. It was all a scream. Oh, yeah, again, we game model the there for Max. For murder. Same tag. We got a new tag, though, here. Cannot read it. Can you? <laughs> My Chicago ease is not cooking in here. Chicago ease. Because we're in New York. Ah, uh, yeah, no, it doesn't. It doesn't translate. Yeah. It's crazy how daylight saving works. It's just like on an unrelated note. It is yeah. like five thirty for me right now, and it is like dark out. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, we're, um, we're in the dark time so of the year now. I, I, I'm in Florida. Like, I'm yeah, in the you're... sunshine state, dog. Yeah, yeah, further south, you you, you get more, like, you, yeah, 5.30 is when it goes dark for you. It goes dark for us at, like, 4 o'clock now, where I live. Oh, yeah, that's right. It was like that. The further north you are, the earlier it's going to get dark. Um, I don't have much ammo for these Ingrams, but I could probably wipe this room pretty easily with them. Fuck. Could have used the shotgun. Probably should have. Uh, th I don't know. The problem is if I fire the shots with a shotgun and they don't kill both of them, which as we've seen with a shotgun, it is really inconsistent. Um, I think you gotta stick more to the pump action, dog. It's so slow between shots. That's the thing. In, in a single dive, I can fire like one shot from the pump action. Pump action's more reliable for general fighting, but um, for the shoot dodging, you probably want to be using the, um... Probably want to be using the, uh, sword off shotgun. I said negative 25 today. Is that in Fahrenheit or Cell? That's gonna really change how cold that is. That'll be Celsius. Um, yeah. just oh, in Canada, God. yeah. Negative 20... Yeah. Really? That's bitter. Is it snowy at the moment, though? Because I guess it's like... I know snow's like the default in Canada, but... It is. Yes. yes. Okay. So much. <laughs> right, the yeah. The whole building was rigged with explosives. Uh, is this the one that goes flying? Am I thinking? I might be thinking of Max Payne 2 with the flying gas I'm medicine. just going to say, no, no. I know for a fact if this game was made within the last three years, that explosion would, would, would take place and then Max would just go, uh, well that just happened. God, I hate that you're probably right. I'll do it. Don't you just... There it is. This is the game where they fly. Oh my god. Yeah, I was trying to remember if that was a Max Payne 1 or Max Payne 2 thing. It's a Max Payne 1 thing. I like okay. how the Desert Eagle can hold 12 rounds. Like, yeah, what? definitely can't in real life. Actually, can it? No, it just it's like... Uh, depending on the caliber, think, it'll hold a different amount, but I don't know of any off the top of my head that hold 12. I'm gonna, guess... I'm gonna assume this is 50 AE, but I know you can get it in like 357 Magnum as well. You can get it 44, 357, um, I think there's technically a Desert Eagle model in like 45 ACP. Makes sense. So. I mean, yeah, the Desert Eagles are really weird. Ooh, see, look at that bullshit. Yo! Oh. 
all my shots missed. Okay, there we go. I'm, I'm hydrating, Jess, don't worry. <laughs> I'm alright. Oh, I'm hydrating as well, I'm through this glass. He's through the glass. God damn. Alright, uh... Yeah, I just finished my drink. <laughs> damn. Okay. Time to crack open another bottle of water. Alright. Does it even Ooh, good use of music here. Yeah, it really is. Music in this game is really good. It's not like a highlight of the game, but like, it's all solid. A beaten up phone in the entrance hall was ringing. It could have been just a junkie in need of a fix, but it turned out to be something more sinister than that. Am I speaking to Mr. Payne? Who wants to know? My name is Alfred Wooden. You must hurry. The police are on their way. Tell me something I don't know. They know you're there. How? And what's it to you? I will contact you again. Oh. The cops arrived, sirens singing in the off-key harmony of a manic depressive choir. I had a few minutes while the SWAT team would go through their usual routine. By the time they busted in, I needed to be long gone. Max Payne, this is Deputy Chief Jim Bravora from the NYPD. Drop your weapons and come out with your hands above your head. So now the police are involved, um, directly. And we're going to see what it's like with the police. As I said, we never kill them, but that doesn't mean they don't shoot at us. Oh, fuck. Is it one of those things where if you try to kill a cop, the game will like, I, like say, I yeah. genuinely just don't think you can damage them. Oh. The few times you see them. Makes sense. They have like, you know, they have Kevlar. Where are they? <laughs> I know there's people in here because I just saw them. They're not dead. There's his friend. Nice. Sometimes the shotgun's great. It's just it's a gamble every time. Mm -hmm. It's certainly not the worst shotgun in video games, but it is far from the best. Mm -hmm. uh, can I go through here? I, I know there's a lock on the Without door. Without a key, I'd oh, never okay. get past this door. I wonder where we're going to find an economically large key. Oh god, I don't think we'd Someone have. had left a letter on the counter. Sorry. There's a key on the shelf. There it is. Same model. <laughs> it is! It's a comically large key! Suddenly it all made sense. The bombs, the Russian mob boss making an appearance in person. Gogniti was his usual self. All talk and no walk. After I hit, the Russian has only a couple of guns left and they can be bought. There's no freaking way he has the guts to try anything after that. As it turned out, the Russian had plenty of guts. One thing he could count on, you push a man too far and sooner or later he'd start pushing back. And there's the police. But yeah, can't hurt them. So, not even gonna try. Luckily, the game doesn't really push you into them at any point, so it's not really a problem. Yeah. Oh, fuck! See? Mm. The game uses some cheap tricks, is the point I've been trying to make here. And this yeah. level is demonstrating that for me handily. <laughs> Again! He killed himself. But... Oof. <laughs> okay, it's okay. <laughs> Bathrooms are usually a fairly reliable source of painkillers. Um, yep, there you go. See? Um, because I guess bathrooms is where people keep painkillers. It makes sense to have a medicine cabinet. It's like usually public bathrooms where you just find painkillers. No. But, you know. Not, not at all. It's it's a seedy hotel. I guess you just find, you know, maybe they have complimentary painkillers. Maybe these places are actually really cool like that. They just give out free drugs. I don't know. Here's your complimentary painkillers. And next to that, you'll find your complimentary uh, heroin cleaning kit. <laughs> Does it like go on like? Do, do, do they put it on? Do they put on your pillow like a chocolate? The syringe. <laughs> yeah, like the syringe and the little Vicodin <laughs> pill as well. If you want something a little less hard, like. Yeah. No, that's for the kids. That's for the kids, of course, of course. So yeah, yeah. They don't bug you at night. Yeah. Oh, God. Damn. <laughs> Oh, 
Desert Eagle is actually one of the more reliable weapons for range, so a not bad strategy is often just to kind of get a bit of distance between you and fight the Desert Eagle. Still ain't great, but it's one of the more accurate weapons in the game. Which I'd like to say, kind of makes some sense. The Desert Eagle having a fixed barrel compared to the other guns that you've been using makes it fairly accurate. Yeah, yeah. Fixed barrel, the whole um, moving bolt and everything like that. It's um, kind of nuts. Desert Eagle's a really weird gun. Uh. The bombs had destroyed yeah. all the stairs up to Lupino's office. The alternate route led there by way of adjoining rooftops. Ah, do we really? I forgot this is how early we deal with Vinny. This is. It's never been this I always thought of Vinny like being a fairly later like game enemy. Yes, sir. It's the end of the world as we know. And I don't feel fine. I don't feel anything. Not a thing. What's up, fellas? My butt off. Oh, man. You know, I, I'm not going to take this time to soapbox on the homelessness problem in America, but fucking ouch. Yeah. Yeah. I don't I don't think this is the kind of vibe the stream. <laughs> no, I mean, you, you can soapbox all you like if you want. I'm not. <laughs> I don't think it's going to be like a... It's not going to be the hottest take. It's it's a fairly well-known issue. Oh, yeah. It's just, it's just there's a surprising amount that goes against the people, you know? I don't know if you saw very early on when you were in the subway station. You know, To the get to the roof, the, uh... I'd need to get to the elevator through the locked door up ahead. Sorry, yeah, Karen, you were saying? Yeah, I'm making sure the just talks for that. Um, uh, earlier on, you're in the, uh, the subway. The benches in the subway have these little handle, like the armrests. Right. In the middle of them. Entirely designed it's so you delivery. could not lay down. Never seen them. you before. Buzz off, Joker. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> They're just designed so people can't lay on them, which yeah. just makes them more uncomfortable. Because I remember when I was in New York, I, I don't know why, but some of the some of those those stools in the subway station were just puny small, like. I, I was there for work, and I was working. Some of my coworkers couldn't even use it. I'm like a big guy, so I knew yeah. I wouldn't be able to sit in them. A couple of my coworkers, they're like healthy, fine. They're like, this is such a tiny seat. Jeez. Which just makes it. Oh, uh, did he hit the junkie? No, he didn't. Yes, he did. Yeah, there's a lot of that, um, it's never been this like, cold. Never just unfriendly ever. design. So, yeah, I, I think of it very predatory, because I, mm. I actually saw one recently in my own area. It's not a bench. To get to the roof, this I'd is... need to get to the elevator through the locked door up ahead. This doesn't matter. This is one you might not know about. Uh, blue lighting. Yeah, so you can't, um, inject. It's, it's significantly harder to inject. I understand maybe you don't want people shooting up in your bathrooms, but, uh... You know, that just means people are more likely to get hurt in your bathrooms. F5, F9 to quick save and load. I know, but you only get one quick save slot, and I like to stagger save so that I don't mess up my, uh... <laughs> so I don't overwrite a save and get, like, one where I'm just dead the moment I turn a corner. Appreciate the tip, though. Yeah, for sure, thank you. It's oh, for fuck's sake. Sorry, I had to. I didn't want to. Oh, no! <laughs> I had to. I'm really sorry. Oh shit. Max Payne really just doesn't give a shit about the people anymore. If huh? someone shoots at him, he's gonna shoot at them. Yeah. Like, no, it I sucks, understand. and I, I wish I didn't you're... have to kill them there, but. Game yeah, didn't he's give entirely me much heartless, choice. and it's all your fault, Ashley. Uh... <laughs> oh fuck. So unreliable. Okay, this is where I use this. Yeah, it is. Just gotta give him the old, the old Kansas City shuffle hood. It, it's not good. It's though. not. No, no, no. I never said that. I said it's not good if I'm gonna be like shoot dodging into a room, because I can only fire one round before I hit the ground. Excuses, excuses. Sorry, who's played this game before? Uh, I, whose name is in the title? <laughs> oh right, yeah. Sorry, Max. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't shoot. I, I. You know the clowns at the laundry. Me? 
No. You're no good to me then. What? No, 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 the laundry, yeah. I know him, yeah. Get me in there. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Told you, these mobsters are the best part of this game. They're not the best part of this game. This game's got a lot going for it, but they're really good. All right, let's get on to the laundry. I'm assuming you can't kill him. This dude? Yeah. You know what? Let's just use that quick save. Oh. Cannot kill him. Pressure was too much. I had sunk down to their level. It wasn't worth it. Nothing was. I like that, though. That's really good. Wow. Another, like, justification for why that's a fail state. Yeah. It's like Batman shooting someone. It's like, oh, it's too late. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, that, that's really good, because a lot of the time it would just be like, ah, oh, game over, you killed the thing, right? Just a text on the screen, right? Don't don't kill the guy you're, you're helping, or the guy that's helping you, you know? But the game's like, no, no, we're going to actually give you some dialogue that you'll only see if you fuck up in this particular way. Okay. And, like, it's from Max's perspective. It's like, hey, I messed up. I've, I've sunk down. I've I've gone too far. I'm going to say this now. He goes further than this, kind of. Wait, yeah, I guess he doesn't quite go further than this, but he... This guy's not innocent. I'm going to say that. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> this is to go further beyond. <laughs> Gonna go ahead and his own at this point now. Okay. Yeah, you should show that rat who's boss. <laughs> it's me. Open up. Let me in quick. Not so fast. The password. John Wu. Come on. Okay, John Wu. All right. John Wu. There you I'm go. Waiting. And kind of being really on the on the nose about the um the the influences for this game. I have grenades, I do. I didn't kill anyone. Oh my god, that's so violent. Oh, that was bad. Are you, are you worried there's more people in there you didn't get? Hmm? Oh. I didn't hear his death sound. It's just like Hunt, you know? You gotta, you gotta listen for the sound. Uh, you don't yes, hear it, course, they're not dead. Oh my god, okay. Yeah, good job, mate. Distinguish them. Oh shit, there's two of them. No. Just keep shoot dodging. Okay. Uh, no painkillers in it, no. Anything on the TV? I assume not. No. And this was a laundry, but these this is... Oh, this is... Oh, it's money printing. Yeah, it's a laundry mat. Uh, so this isn't money laundering though, they're printing sheets. Uh, don't ruin my good joke. How about that? Well, may, may, well <laughs> I, I won't ruin your good joke when you make one. Ah, oh, there it is. <laughs> Ooh, elevator music. Good elevator music. We've got another. This okay. So, you know this little melody he's whistling. Yeah. This melody is stuck in my head. Just because it's multiple people in this game whistle it. Um, I don't know if it's a reference to something. I assume not. It's just it's whenever there's whistling, someone's whistling that. And for my entire adult life, because of this game, that melody is just trapped inside my head permanently. <laughs> and if I ever go to whistle, I have to actively try to not whistle that exact fucking melody. That's crazy. Ooh, he's having a bad time in there. Oh, there we go. What? He did not wash his hands. Wanna know how I know? There's not a sink in there. 
Yeah, this is this is a piece of shit studio apartment. He's got to go over here to wash his hands. Come on. Golly. And how does he shower? I guess he doesn't. Um, or oh, maybe there's like a shower on the, like a shared one on this floor. Oh, I I I swear Oof. if there's a communal shower, I'm gonna cringe. New York City is in crisis tonight, with reports of Valkyrie-related gang war in the streets of the Bronx. Apparently, Max Payne, wanted for questioning in connection with the slaying of a DEA special agent earlier tonight, is waging a one-man war against his former partners in crime. Among the list of casualties so far are notorious Mafia members Joey and Virgilio Finito, as well as Rico Muerte, himself a fugitive from the law and a suspect for several murders in the Chicago area. The NYPD has been placed on full alert. A citywide APB has been put out on Max Payne. Deputy Chief Jim Brevera has promised to take whatever steps necessary to bring him to justice. What those steps may be remains to be seen. For NYCNN TV News, this is Kira Silver. Jim Brevera there just kind of being vague like, yeah, we're going to take whatever steps are necessary. Uh... I'll let you yeah, know to figure sure out what those like are. Yeah, that sure sounds like a police chief in a city talking about crime. Oh, fuck. No, 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 no. Okay, there's a thing here, and I really want to show it. It's the last place I Got to show the TV. Best TV in the game. It's not me talking to the pink flamingo, but someone who looks the part down to the finest detail, except that he's evil. I'm hiding in the shadows, watching it all unfold. Jess, you get bonus points if you recognize this. You can speak here. It says... Mirrors are more fun than television. That's... Mirrors are more fun than television. Somehow I know this, just don't ask me how. <laughs> and I, not me, but my double, nods and smirks at this like it was the funniest thing in the world. <laughs> and then something goes wrong. And suddenly they know I'm there, hiding behind them, and they both turn to look at me with cold eyes. And the flamingo speaks again. That fresh old fallen angels. I have no idea what that means. So pay attention to that screaming sound, right, that you hear? I'll tell you what that is in a sec. And that's when I always wake up to my own scream, in that bright lily white hospital room, strapped to my bed. Okay, so Je before I say it, Jess, what is that a reference to? Come on, you know this. I need you to write it out just so I know that I'm not going to be disappointed in you. Just so there's no winning, uh, Jess, if you get it right, I will be disappointed in you. Yes, Twin Peaks, she got it. Yes, uh, hey. that's, that's a reference to Twin Peaks. Um... Uh, Twin Peaks is one of my favorite TV shows, um, and that there is a direct reference to it. I know that that seems really odd. That is what Twin Peaks is like. Um, <laughs> it's fucking great. It's really good. It's a really good show. Um, but so, you, you know, I made a note of, like, telling you, hey, pay attention to that screaming, right? Yeah. Uh, you've heard that before. Do you know where? Uh, no. That is the sound of Max's baby screaming. Really? Yes, it's pitched down and slowed, but that is the sound of Max's baby screaming. That was in the bathroom scene then, right? Yeah. Wow. We're going to hear that sound more throughout the game, but that's 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 actually you hear it there in the TV. Use the resources you have. I well, no, I I I think it's like directly I think it's like directly trying to like less using the resources they have and more like trying to call back to it and like kind of induce that twin peaks is twin peaks like max Payne, is quite a light-hearted funny show at times um it's very similar in tone to this in a lot of ways um but it has it also goes out of its way to completely unnerve you um and pull you out of it and Twin Peaks is a show that's about sort of television and stuff like that, and there are and similar to Max Payne, there are TV shows in that TV show um, that are kind of aping certain things. There's actually like a Lords and Ladies kind of thing in that that's called Invitation to Love. Um, so Max Payne also takes some influence from Twin Peaks. Funnily enough, um, you know um, David Lynch's best TV show. It's great. Um, 
it's but yeah, thing the, of the, the best way to make someone unsettled is to put them in a place of comfort first. Yeah. Uh, God, yeah. Fuck. Twin Peaks does that in space. Yeah, I think you. I did, I assume you'd like Twin Peaks. I'd hope you would. It's a really good show. Um, I've been recommended it specifically because of what I like in shows. The issue is I just don't watch a lot of shows, so I, I do need to give it a try sometime though. Boy, how do you do? You? Coming soon, uh, the, the the Ludo Narrative podcast where we'll be talking about. <laughs> It's always red or blue in the movies. So green? No, not the green. Oh, oh this is great. <laughs> watch this. Just watch this, right? So I'm gonna, uh, just gonna go through this door. I don't know. In case there is any doubt that this is not a Looney Tunes cartoon. Yeah. <laughs> So the Russians, if you haven't caught on, the Russians have placed bombs all over these buildings that are owned by um, the Punchinello crime family, or Vinnie Gogniti, I think, in this case. Um, mm -hmm. They're just a bunch of slums that they own. Um, Makes sense. And so, projects. yeah, there, there's a mob war going on right now between the Russians and the Punchinello crime family, or just the Italian mafia, I guess. And so th we're kind of caught in the middle of it right now. Oh, wow, wow. Oh, shit. Ooh, just any more please one at a time <laughs> single file oh my god so i have a little complaint about this game and it's something that they fixed in the second game but it's the fact that the grenades are on their own button um and it's it's also it's like five which is kind of far out right for your finger it's not easy to like shotgun three easy ingrams four why not um these out in five means it's really difficult to just get a grenade out in the middle of a fight and throw it. Um, you just kind of have to use them yeah. as a pre-planning thing. And in, in a game like this, where you're trying to like just be fairly smooth and run through situations and shoot, you don't want to like stop and go, okay, I've got to do this, throw this, okay, it lands exploded, then go. You want to... It messes with the flow of the gameplay. Uh, yeah. They fix it in the second game by having a dedicated um, melee stroke grenade throwing button. Um... So you can just like put, if you select Molotovs, it then goes on middle mouse click. So then you oh. can just throw them as you're moving. So you don't have to like scroll and select them and put away your, put away your gun in order to use them. Um, that's... Um, are you spoiling the sequel by telling me there's Molotovs in it? Kind of not okay. What are you doing? This is war! Freaking war! Spoilers, uh, Max's wife is dead and won't come back to life. He's not in the sequel. Vinny got needy. Just the man I've been killing to see. Pain? Oh, that I knew from day one there was something screwy about you. What do you think you're doing? You're a freaking cop. You ain't got squat on us. You can't just come in here waving your piece like it meant something. Yeah. Oh my god. Oh god, you shot me. Ah. <laughs> I love Vinny. <laughs> you're dead, Payne. What the hell are you waiting for, you apes? Kill him. Kill him. With pleasure, boss. Got me be bailed. I made like Chow Yun fat. Again with the. John Woo movie, uh, movie things. Oh god, I've been shot! So, you want to know something oh. funny and kind of sad? In, 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 in a good way, I guess. Yeah. Um, Vinny Gogniti's in the second game. Um, and he's even more of a sniveling piss baby in that one. <laughs> I, am, I shit ye Cold not. Let her lay on Gogniti's desk. Serious. I am very serious. <laughs> Oh my god. The letter was addressed to Don Punchinello, but Vinny had never had the nerve to finish it. Jack's gone voodoo. Just the other night, he shot Dino because he wanted to see what his brains looked like splattered on the wall. He's a freaking mad dog. We're running out of men and business fast. Gogniti had been living in mortal fear of his boss. Jack Lupino was a psycho. So Jack Lupino is now another name that we're going to be chasing after. But yeah, no, Vinny, um, again, sniveling and crying and cowardly in this. Boy, howdy, is he so much worse in the second game. This baby. Yeah, no, fucking no. Vinny Gogniti was running scared. He could run, but with a bullet in the stomach like a broken bottle of Tabasco, he was quickly running out of time. He knew where his boss was, and I wanted to square things up with Jack Lupino. Save her. 
just because I know that I'm gonna fuck this Dark up. Dark will be moving fast. I don't know about angels, but it's fear that gives men wings. How many Ingram rounds do I have? Quite a few. Let's use those. It's fear that gives men wings. What a line. It, this this game is full of lines like that. Oh Genuinely yeah, no, brilliant. I've noticed. I've, oh yeah, <laughs> I'm taking notes. <laughs> Gagnidi if that's a bug, right. I feel like I should be able to see the rails, but lead. yeah, they're there, they just went in the... Ooh, yeah, that's some weird LOD stuff there. Must just be, like, right out of frame, yeah. <gasps> this was dun, my dun, second dun. train ride of the night. The way it started didn't promise anything better than the last one. Freezing wind tearing at my face like sandpaper and razors. Ice hard and slick under my hands and feet. And somewhere in the background, the wail of sirens. The city howling after me. So visceral. There's something really nice about by being able to describe forward, stuff. Dark that rooftop detail. water towers yeah. and a dead forest of antennas and chimneys, all a blur. When the train he was riding slowed down, Gogniti made his move. Gogniti, who's been shot? Must be on the same painkill as Max is. Yeah, I'm kidding. Vicodin? <laughs> so good. Yeah. Remember, folks, ask your doctor if Vicodin is right for you. <laughs> Not. <laughs> even, oh, I love how they even animate the Desert Eagle correctly here. That's good. That's surprising. I've seen some games get that wrong. Yeah, it's a surprising amount of them. Then again, not every game has the budget to spend, like, what is it, a couple grand on a gun just to model. Yeah, I, actually, I wonder... I wonder if they did just get a Desert Eagle, I don't know. Or maybe they had, maybe there's like a museum nearby that they use. I know, oh shit. Museums are often used and stuff like that, so. Oh, also, worth noting, because I was demonstrating it there perfectly without intending to, bullets, um, have a travel, fuck. Bullets have a travel time. Um, oh. You do have to lead your shots in this game. Gogniti would be moving fast. I don't know about angels. Oh, this is the wrong save. Whoops, that's the one. I will say, um, back on the detailing that they used to describe the 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 wind hitting his face. God, love that. Shotguns, man. Yeah, what did he say? It was razors and sandpaper, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's like sandpaper and razors slashing his face. Yeah, his like you immediately just go, oh, I know what that feels like. Like it's... I know exactly. That's that's that is good metaphor. Um... Even if even if you have never felt snow, which could be a good chunk of the population that plays. Sure, I yeah. know in the Florida area where I'm in, to fucking if there's snow, everything shuts down because people just have never seen it. They're not used to it. Yeah. So describing like the cold, bitter wind of snow smacking you in the face. Oh, who really paints a good picture for him? Yeah, I um, yeah, really, really cold snow fucking hurts. Yeah, it does. It's almost like it could kill you. It could. Yeah. And yet, in spite of that pain, I do genuinely. He's coming down the oh, stairs. fuck these, Shoot the these jokers. Okay, boss, you got it. No problem. All right. All right. All right. Got him, boss. I'll get him, boss. Oh, um, boss, I got him. These three, I don't know why I'm hitting these. Yeah, I shouldn't. Um, I went to change weapon and apparently didn't happen. Fuck. All right. Oh, God. All right. I'll, I'll, it's really, it needs to be said. It can be really hard to play a game and commentate it at the same time. <laughs> oh. Uh, no, everyone at home, Judge Ashley. 
This is the easiest stuff in the world. Everyone at home, just want to let you know, uh, Max won't be showing up next week. Um, or any future <laughs> weeks. He is fired. You're fired, Max. <laughs> you can't replace me, I'm part of the brand. <laughs> Okay. Alright, I'm not gonna fuck with those boxes. It's, it's my staying. my we thirst for dead. free it's ammo. Okay, um, got, got the no better trouble. of me. I'm gonna I might actually get a quick save here, cause fuck it, yeah. I can. Getting the same music again. There we go. Quick save. Oh shit, you can't shoot while you're jumping. That's another thing to remember. Ooh. Smoked him. That's actually the most successful fight I've had against those guys. These three, in like on my last run, killed me quite a few times. Usually down in this really? room here. Yeah, they just the way they take cover and the angles they're at, it was really difficult to get all three of them. Um, especially at, with the like ammo and weapons I had at the time. Okay, also this like we're following um, Vinny Gognidi's, um sort of trail here, and I just love this, right? Because he's oh. he's been holding himself. He's uh, the blood's there. He's you know, he's stumbling, he's put his hands up against the wall before moving off, like, that's such a good visual. I love that. Yeah. It really is. I do really appreciate that a lot. And okay, again, so, it's, it's, go on, carry on. It's one of the things that any video game will do if you're chasing someone who's bleeding out, just follow the blood trail. Yeah. But it's nice seeing them actually stumble and fall against the wall. Mm -hmm. So, um, in the ongoing game of why are these painkillers here? Why were there painkillers here? In this empty room? <laughs> Let's see, this is a, um... It's like an apartment building, I think. The bottom of an apartment building. Uh, that looks like a little receptionist area, right? Like a little window there? Sort of, maybe? Yeah. yeah. Maybe that's just like a public first aid kit. Public... just, just, just Vicodin. Just, just painkillers. It was a different time in 2001. <laughs> I mean, hey, this game was developed, like, in the late 90s, so, like... Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. You know what they say, the past is a different place and time. Do enemies reload in this game? Yep. Sure do. That's something that surprises me. You can use that. Oh, fuck. Again, yeah, a reminder, everyone, this is the easiest difficulty. <laughs> there are two difficulties harder than this. He looks angry. He's really angry. Yeah, this is merely fugitive difficulty. Merely. I remember this fairy being a bit of a bastard as well. I, I'm going to save scum a lot because I don't want to have to keep repeating myself. But, hey, I. Well, I see why. A little bit of shotgun and desert eagle ammo. Grenade in there. And a grenade in there. Okay. <laughs> Anything in here? Ingram ammo, nice. Oh, nothing in the back of this map. the Destiny Eagle ammo for that, but sure. I just didn't want to spend too long. Fair. And then, look, they're burying, uh, they're building a new building, um, an apartment oh. building, and they're burying police bodies underneath it. Like, if this is a criminal operation. Yeah. I think this is fucking great. Hey, I mean, I if love you're gonna lay detail. a foundation, might as well, you know, put some solid support beams in there. Nothing says support like pork. You know, I couldn't agree. If she could call it support. Oh come on. <laughs> Too strained. All right, everybody. Next week we'll be doing the rest of Max Payne without Ash. <laughs> oh yeah. Good luck, Max. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure you'll have no problem beating this game. Yeah, I know, none at all, no. You see, I'm a gamer, right? Oh. 
What I like here is he had a grenade in his hand ready to throw. But because I oh. killed him while he was throwing it, I get to keep it. The grenade. Okay, so Jess just broke up with me thanks to that joke, so, um... <laughs> never say that I don't suffer for my art, you know? Yeah, yeah. I, art? My craft. Wait, what is that sign? Go back. Hang on. <laughs> America's <laughs> Avenger. The, pay the payback time. Um, what I love about this is that this is an Italian pistol. <laughs> yeah. <It is. laughs> it's um, the yeah the iconic Beretta 92 FS, which is Max's kind of yeah main kind of his iconic weapon, I guess. Mm -hmm. But yeah, America's Avenger for the payback time. <laughs> My dad had one of these actually. Did he? Yeah. Damn. Oh yeah, no, he definitely did. Yeah. Captain Baseball Bat Boy, he's back. He's mean, and he's got a bat. Okay. Let's play a game. Do grenades break glass? They do not. My goodness. Oh. I feel I'm like I, I knew to do that because I think I tried that the first time I played this and... Jeez, okay, that kind of worked. That, that one's fine, that one's fine. Oh my god. There was some explosives in here, evidently. I guess. No bodies, so we didn't actually kill anyone yet. Cupcake, thank you for the lurk. I don't actually have that as a command. I don't. I'll be real. I don't know what the lurk command does, but I appreciate it. <laughs> okay, where I think are it these means, jokers? Like, it counts you as a viewer if you're not necessarily engaging or something. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. That know. makes sense. Okay, nice. Uh, let's go up and oh, I can't open. Oh man, that wall is brown. Yeah, we're in New York. Is New York Walter Brown? It was when I was there. Oh jeez, really? I was there in 2021. Jeez, I've been fairly lucky, I guess. Everywhere I've lived has had just like really good water. Like I like I live in the north of England, so the water here's all pretty soft. When I lived in France, it was harder, but it wasn't like it certainly Max wasn't brown. Max <laughs> has nowhere left to go. We are very close to capturing him. You'll get a full statement then. Right now, I've got better things to do, ma'am. That was Deputy Chief Jim Brevera from the NYPD with no further comment at this time. Apart from his suspicious food habits, I figured Brevera to be one of the good guys. Fate had just dropped us on different sides in this. But when it came to capturing me, he was way out of his league. I had already ditched the cops a couple of rooftops back. For now. Yeah, Bravura, spoilers alert. Actually, no. I was gonna say he never catches you. Um He does though, I think. Ooh. Fancy. Well we did miss there though, was these two guys um talking about who's gonna blast in through the door first. And being oh fuck. Okay. This whole corridor's bullshit. And then using Ingrams, which are also kind of bullshit. So. Wow. This this corridor and more like it um, caused me a lot of problems um, in my last playthrough. I'll tell you that much. Can I break these? No. Something's wood. You can often break it, but it's not completely consistent. Ooh, someone's around that corner. Mm. Told you. Yeah. Also, notice this. What? Where have we seen this before? Hmm. It's also slightly not on the wall. Uh, 
Kind of hovering in midair. The hologram. Don't you know this is the cyberpunk universe? Uh, yeah. Uh, we saw this in Roscoe Street Station. That's what it was. Yeah. Thank you. We're gonna keep saying it. It's uh, it's it, obviously it's a reference to Valkyrie. Open, goddammit! Oh. Pain! I'll kill you, you lousy freaking. It's a bad shot. Uh. He's probably in a lot of pain right now. Probably. <laughs> oh. Fuck oh, off. <laughs> that was bad. I didn't realize I made it. I didn't realize it until I said it, alright? I don't believe you. Fuck. No, 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 no. I'm flattered that you think I have the foresight for that joke. But definitely not the case. Uh, let's use a shotgun here, I think. I can't aim. Get some ammo back by doing a shoot dodge. Didn't leave my shot enough, and I'm dead. Uh, uh, that's my latest save, I think. Oh, really? One sec. Let me try that's this. Not, there's no way that's your latest save, is it? No, I did one on the roof. Right? Go to the top three, maybe? Oh, you know? Oh, that. Okay. There you go. Oh fuck, I, I missed the boxes. Alright. So, there was a lot of explosions in here last time we came here. That's because like, shit like this blew up. Oh, okay. So that's why that grenade seemed like way more powerful than it actually was. Uh, okay. Again, we also this was a drug deal, right? There's more Valkyrie. There's how many is really high-end vials. I wonder why I mean, that would listen, be. you know, the better the product, the more quickly people are going to stay addicted to it, you know? Yeah, I mean, yeah, this looks like it must must be quality product if it comes like that. <laughs> Rather than just like in like a jug that they bought at Ikea. Not Ikea. Why would it be Ikea? Home Depot. Why was Ikea where I went? I, I, I want to I say you're wrong for saying Home Depot, but like, it's either Home Depot or Lowe's. And honestly, I think you're more likely to find a drug deal at Home Depot. Arith Hose 100? What do you mean, Jess? I don't know what that is. Arith Hose? Are those. Are those 100s? What? The the dollar bills on the... Oh, right. Yeah, of course they'll be hundreds. The bills, the bills. I, 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 you tell me, are those hundreds? Those are 50s. Are they? Okay. That, that looks like a 50, yeah. I, 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 I don't know the, the people, like the faces yeah, on the Yeah, because a Benjamin money. is a 100. Okay. I'll take your word for it. Uh, what are the painkillers in here? There wasn't any painkillers in here, was there? Oh, we get to hit these guys, jokers at least. Yep, I just pulled it up. Um, Fifty dollar bill does have uh, Ulysses S. Grant on it. Okay. Eighteen depressing to do minutes. Alright. Just gonna be aggressive. E, e, aggressive. Game can be over very quickly. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. I kinda knew though would I'd get a lot of deaths in here. This is still pro I was going to say six hours, we're talking a lot and like slowing down at times, so maybe a little more than six hours, but this is this is still less than I died in like a normal playthrough, so I'll take it. You know what? Here for it. Can I go in here? No. 
soon enough. Alright, let's deal with these guys. Not get killed by the shots and guys to the right. Game is only six hours long. It's more like eight hours long, but six hours if you know what you're doing. Well, we know what we're doing. We're also slowing down. So it will be about eight hours. <laughs> Game is three chapters, and we're coming close to the end of the first chapter. Oh, for fuck's sake! Forgot about that. The wall saved you. It did. I'm gonna... After this cutscene, I'm gonna quick save. There we go. Nope, that's quick load. There we go, that's quick save. Alright. Oh. Don't die. Nope, we're trying to change weapon, but thank you, game. That's exactly what I wanted. Alright. Um, might do. If I hit fire there. Can I get one over there? Oh! Oh! Kobe! Be more accurate when you crouch, but like gaming instincts tell me that I should crouch to be accurate. I don't think it actually makes a difference. Uh, it's something you could test out. Oh shit, there's Vinny. God, I don't know if that's him breathing on me. I think that's him. And as with all the bosses in this game, thank you. Video games. There we go. Gagnetti ran out of steam in a dead-end alley with steam boiling out of the sewer grates like all the fires of hell were burning high beneath us. It was shit down time. Where's Lupino? Screw you! Bad start, Vinny. Ah! Police brutality! I rate pretty high on that. <laughs> you, you, you can't just hurt me in cold blood? Uh, just keep telling yourself that. Listen good, candy man. I'm not gonna be anybody's fall guy. I wanna know where your boss is hiding. There was no glory in this. I hadn't asked for this crap. Trouble had come to me in big dark swarms. The good and the just were like gold dust in the city. I had no illusions. I was not one of them. I was no yeah, hero. There's that photo I pointed out earlier. Just me and the gun yeah. and the crook. My options had decreased to a singular course. I'll tell you, I'll tell you, just don't hurt me no more. Lupino's at Ragnarok, the nightclub. Book me, take me in a whole minute to freaking jail, just don't hurt me. Your rights will be read at your funeral. Again, he's more of a piss baby in the sequel. Ragnarok was Lupino's private nightclub, a den of drugs built into an old theater. I knew what waited inside. V had junkies ready to explode in random acts of senseless violence, and Lupino's goon squad, the worst stone cold killers this side of hell. Ragnarok was as inviting as a headache, flickering and flashing to a machine gun beat. The belly of a nightclub was a gothic theme park that began with bondage games and led to the nasty stuff from there. This is a really good level. As subtle with its dark message as a cop killer bullet through the heart. Like father, like son. Just like Jack Lupino. Okay. Uh, it's been three hours, so let's at the very least take a break. Um... Do you think we could go for four hours? How are you feeling? Um, how close are we to the end of Act 1? Or was that the end of Act 1? I think this level is going to be the last one in Act 1. I say we finish Act 1 and then we can get, we can stop there. I, I wouldn't mind a break right now, though. Sure, yeah. All right, folks. Um, We are going to go for a brief break. Also, your, uh, your desktop is showing. It is showing, but I've gotten rid of that.
Um, yeah, we're going to go for a brief break here, folks. Um, stick around. We're just going to, you know, get up, stretch our legs, get a drink, do, you know, human stuff so that we don't become husks. Um, so <laughs> there'll be a brief ad break while we're away. Don't worry. It, it will be over before we get back, so you will not miss a thing. So stick around, folks. <clears throat> Hello, folks. We are back. Yes, with we are. More Max Payne. And uh, while I, man, so I always, you know, I always have like a <clears throat> the background image, right? Um, for like when we go to break and stuff. And I always try and find official artwork where I can. And this is official mm -hmm. artwork. Um, but because this is a game from two thousand one, none of it was high res. Oh. So I had to try and Photoshop this to a way that looked convincingly 16 by 9 1080p. Uh, <laughs> really? And it's a mess. But hey, I, I, you know what? I'm not good at Photoshop and content aware, aware Phil is witchcraft. So it's good enough for me. Uh, if it makes you feel better. I didn't even notice. Yeah. If you know what to look for, you would, you would like, you can see like, you can see parts where bricks just don't make sense, and those are bits where I've, um... Yeah. Okay, to be fair, I've seen bricks like that in real buildings. Okay. Fair enough. Alright, let's get back into the game. This is Ragnarok. I think this is the last level from Chapter 1. Okay. Um, yeah, it's a, a closed club. So we got this, these sick beats. This, I'm sure they were sick in 2001, at least. Um, oh, yeah. And does this open? This does open. It's got a shotgun. We have needed more ammo. Fine. The camera's getting kind of funky there in those tight spots. Kind of a downside is like because the camera's going to move closer if there's a wall in the way, you do get like bits of like inconsistently. Like, you see how it kind of jumps there? Yeah. Stuff like that. It's a little awkward. Kind of the age of the game, I suppose. Again, yeah. this, this, well, I just did kind of set a blueprint for how to kind of. At least do basic movement and aiming and stuff in third person shooters. Still had a long way to go. Absolutely. But it's still good. You know, I don't play nearly enough third person shooters. You should play Vanquish. If you like this. I mean you can play this, it's cheap. Um Although you will have to go on PC gaming wiki to like get it working completely properly, because it's, it's, it's not too bad. Have been a bestseller. Um it's like some of the sounds don't work out of the box, um, and um, obviously it isn't widescreen by default and stuff, so... But there are there widescreen fixes that just do that for you, um, and you know, once you've got it installed and running, you kind of forget that you had to do all that in the first place anyway. Um, but alternatively, Vanquish is like the king of third-person shooters, in my opinion. It's like it's like if Devil May Cry was the shooter. Um, really? Really good. I'll have to look into it. Don't worry about that later. Mm -hmm. Given the setting, I was surprised to find that somebody had been passing time reading. The paperback was entitled, The Age of Murder and Storm. The blurb on the back mentioned Norse mythos and Ragnarok, the end of a Viking world with a terrible winter that covered the earth in ice, when vile crimes were rampant and all humanity lost. I could see how somebody impressionable might get it into their head that we were at the end of time. I was also beginning to see what the nightclub and its owner were all about. Hmm. So Jack Lupino's into his um, Norse mythology, and the uh, the drug is called Valkyr. Yeah. Okay, that grenade can fuck right off. <laughs> Did you see that? Yeah. He bounced it off the like the door frame, and it went there. Listen, just don't have a skill issue. Just don't have a skill issue. You're right. I'm sorry. This is all my fault. This is a skill issue. Yeah. Oh, this dude. Be like, look at the range I got that shotgun on. And then sometimes I'll like point blank someone in the dick from like, you know, like, like a foot away and they'll shrug it off like it's nothing. It's so yeah. inconsistent. I know shotguns can be inconsistent. In fuck. I know shotguns can be inconsistent in video games anyway, but it feels like this one is particularly bad. Not as bad as like Doom 3 shotgun, which is really inconsistent, but yeah. Man, I have words to say about Doom. I've, I've, I, there are Doom 3 shotgun stands out there, and those people are messed in the head. Um, it's not a good shotgun, people. You ready for like a really weird Doom take? Sure. 
So, I don't know if you know, Doom 2016 was not going to be the original Doom 4, right? Right, yeah. It, there was going to be like a COD-style military boots-on-the-ground shooter, right? Yeah. Man, a part of me wants to know what that would have been like so bad. Um, hmm. I'm trying like, to think if about if there really was a... put in the effort to go, like, we're not just making a COD clone, we're going to make, like, a military like, put work into it, yeah, yeah. Broken out. Yeah, like, I, I think that could have been something quite different, unique. Something different. You got me wondering if there is, like, an analogue to that, like, if there is a game that is just like that already. I do wonder. Oh, let's look into it. I'm gonna save before I go through this door. No reason. No? No reason at all? First time. Alright. <laughs> Very interesting to see this club has... books? This is Jack Lapino's thing, right? Like, you know, he's he he likes to read. That's, that's not a joke. That is genuinely part of his character. He likes to read. Um, so. And so yeah, he's he got. Bay map. Okay, that is actually really sick art, though. <laughs> it is. It I is love that. Cool. I really like yeah. that. I love this style. I really do. Um, yeah, I played a lot of Jet Set Radio as a kid as well, which <laughs> maybe oh. maybe why I love these. Books on the occult had been piled on the table. The room was stacked with light reading, such as Necronomicon, Witchcraft, and Paradise Lost. Old exotic titles like Malleus Malficarum and De Umbrarum Rainy Novum Portis. Books with pentagrams on their covers, all dealing with the occult and the infernal. Lying between stacks of horror videos and a couple of Ouija boards. The only thing I could take seriously uh, was Ouija. the thought of Lupino taking it seriously. He had been spending a lot of time getting intimate with the guy downstairs. Mm hmm. Can you die if you use a Luigi board? <laughs> ah, nothing on the TV. What is this? Zombie demons from outer space. Oh, sorry. Freaking zombie demons from outer space. God. And they came. You can't tell me that wouldn't be an amazing fucking video game. I think it's supposed to be a movie, but... Uh, movie still. That would be great. That is, I was going to say, that is a video game, I'm sure. Zombie demons from outer space? It's sort of like Viscera Fest. Yeah. I don't know why, but like it has a to me, like Stubbs the Zombie is what comes to my mind when I read that. Mm, that's it's, it's kind of a sci-fi zombie game. Yeah. It plays the zombies. I don't know why this had to have the button here. Um <laughs> to open the door. Why it had to work different to all the other ones, I don't know. Like the eye at the end of the hall. Yeah. Yeah, I mean it's a club, isn't it? And like it's it's a club run by someone who's like interested in like various religious sort of he's into religious imagery, right? Like that's definitely a part of his character. Oh my god. Why can't I see this dude? My I swear to god I have twenty twenty vision. Um Oh you silly, that's cause we're in twenty twenty two. Oh fuck, I didn't get my eyes updated. As well, my health is really bad right now. Okay, there's some painkillers here at least. Did they say American healthcare isn't free? Just find painkillers around. Just kill some mobsters, God. Yeah. Fucking Rudy Giuliani did it. Why can't you? <laughs> <laughs> that was a joke. <laughs> I feel like I do need to say that that was definitely a joke. <laughs> <laughs> Rudy, Rudy Giuliani can suck a chode, but like... You're not committing I don't know why I'm doing this. I, it's, just, it's unrealistic. You can't keep reigniting the same parasite mix. We don't know how deep those go. Yes. Secrets. Ooh. This game has them, um, but like they're not not crazy secrets or anything. Okay, you're not gonna get like a rocket launcher, right? Um, or a grenade launcher before you're supposed to. Sorry, there's a grenade launcher. There is a grenade launcher, yeah. Ooh. It's, uh, China Lake. Is it China Lake style or Thumper style? I actually don't remember. Shit. Okay, that dude just got shot in the back by his friend. It's 
over so quickly in this game when you die. Damn, traded. Traded. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh, 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 oh. This room. All right. A little less clean that time, but it's not too bad. Yeah. Uh, behind the bar. A shotgun. My shotgun. And this, the dude's gonna roll out. Oh, fuck. I don't know if it comes across on a stream, but when you're in slow-mo, you can actually see like the streams of the bullets. Just barely, it's very small. Looks like you're able to use that to sort of dodge them. You can, you can. It's not easy, but you can. Alright, I'm going to use the Desert Eagle for this. That wasn't what I wanted. I wanted to do this. There we go. So by default in this game, um, the do the shoot dodge button and the um, the bullet time button are the same button, um, oh. which means so like if you're moving and you press the button, then it does a dive. If you're standing still and you press the button, then it does the slow mo. Um, you can separate them though, um, which is what I've done. Um, it's worth knowing because I've seen that as a complaint for this game. Um, some people saying, oh yeah, it's on the same button, so if you want to go into slow-mo, you've got to stand still and then press it, and you, you don't actually have to, you've just got to separate the buttons. Okay. Um, but it, it is annoying when you, if you don't have them separate. Oh shit, right, yeah, there's people in there. Yeah, let's get Living that in the light snowball, if it doesn't rebind buttons, must really be hard. I, it's always worth, like, taking at least a glance at the buttons, just in case. Yeah. Um, and also, like... I've got a friend who's left-handed, and obviously he um, rebinds them at every game because he has to. Makes sense. That's a oh man. That's a thing that I. That, sorry, getting on a soapbox here. I'm not left-handed, but I have my friends left-handed, and we play a lot of games together. I've seen the pain he has to fucking go through with every game, where he's just like, "Is this button going to be relevant? How often am I going to be printing this? You know, how? Where do I put this? It's hard to tell a lot of the time. Games need to put in a fucking." South Pole option, like a preset for left-handed people in their key bindings, just needs to be a be thing. As easy as like swapping the keyboard basically around. How do you mean? Well, like, how do you mean? Like, what do you mean left-handed? Do they like use the mouse with the left hand? Yeah, yeah. So left-handed folks typically, I mean, it's not everyone, but will use the mouse with the left hand, the keyboard, and the right hand. But mm -hmm. it's not comfortable to have your your right hand on the far left of your keyboard because then you you both your hands are like right next to each other right yeah. so most left-handed people i know will either use the right like towards the right hand side of the keyboard like ijklr or some people use the numpad yeah um so what i'm saying is rather than having to go through every single key and rebind them key by key because you don't know how often like a certain you know like if you've never played hunt showdown before and you go into settings it's like oh dark sight what is that how often am i going to be using that right um I'm, I'm agreeing with you and saying that it would be good to flip it i'm saying like the way you could flip it is with um if you treat f as j k as d l you know right yeah yeah sorry yeah i see what you mean point. i thought i thought you were just like oh just move your hand on the keyboard and i was like uh no 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 no, 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 no. like like i'm saying the keyboard is not perfect but it, yeah. it's it's per it's decently symmetrical to flip it over yeah no yeah i see what you mean for sure it's been three days i promise you know, Scout's Honor, that if I ever in, am involved in development of a video game, I'll make sure there's a left hand option. That would be I'm amazing. not in video game development, but you never know. I mean, yeah, me neither, but I, it's, yeah, it's just a a good chunk of the population are left-handed, and man, they get screwed. Oh, fuck. Come on! <laughs> <laughs> Did you save, at least? No. Ah. Oh. It's fine, I got this. I just, I thought they were all dead, and because I was talking with Books you, I got on the occult had been piled on the table. distracted, because I was on my soapbox and I didn't come down from it in time. Um, yeah. Alright kids, make sure you um, practice uh, soapbox safety. Yeah, wear a helmet. Wear a... Look at the health! Look at how much he took off me there. <laughs> game is brutal, it's really, it is a really difficult game. Yeah. Right, Especially yeah, when you're stage. someone who has frequent issues with skill. Ah! 
Not even, no, not acknowledging it. Just not worth my time, mate. <laughs> Beneath me. If I could hand the controls over to you right now, I fucking would. Um, <laughs> I've never played this game. <laughs> That's not fair. Look at this. I make it look easy. And... I gotta hit it. I'm not making Listen. it look that easy, it's really hard. Listen, all I'm saying is, I don't need to be able to drive to tell you you shouldn't drive drunk, and right now, I don't need to play the game to tell you you shouldn't have a skill issue. I wouldn't say anything to his face. He might not... <laughs> I'm even kind of cheating using the Ingram, so it's like, oh, it's in a secret. Okay. Nah, it's not cheating. Where was I shot from? Where are they? Okay. Those painkillers. Okay. All right, there we go. See, easy, and I quick saved, so we're all good. Yeah. Like the one time you save, you actually get to it just fine. That's how it goes. That is how it goes. Just save more often. Save early, save often. But I'm really bad at that. I am. Mm -hmm. Any like, you think for someone who plays as many old games as I do, I I'd get in the habit. Uh, fucking Christ. Uh, <laughs> You'd think I'd get in the habit, especially when shit like that's happening, but I, um, I don't. I'm really bad at it. Like, again, two shots. This building does look like a repurposed, um... Church. Almost like a re... Yeah. Yeah. I'm pretty sure it is. I think that's the idea. I like that a lot. Where was I getting shot from, uh... More people need to turn, uh, turn churches into gloves. Just saying, you know? Uh, it's pretty common. Um, there's near me. There's a church that's a pub now. Well, it's kind of like it's kind of like a club stroke pub. Um, I need like full pretty good. On, is like, they literally just call it the church? Um, I need like a noise complaint inducing club. It's weird because obviously the churches in Britain are many years old. So when they do get converted, it's kind of nuts. So, little detail, we can hear pigeons. Can't see them. <laughs> just, 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 just pointing it out. Get there on the roof. I Not like know. we can see them, but... Maybe they're, like, tucked away in a corner somewhere up there. Zero you know, out of inside. ten. No pigeons. Damn. Oh, no pigeons? Fuck. Oh fuck, I think I need this. You got it. Just jump it. No, I'm just gonna walk it. This should be fine. Me and platforming don't go well together. Like, one of my weaknesses is I'm not great at platformers. What the hell? Again, inconsistency. This guy took three shots. This guy took one. Love to see it, though, you know? Whatever. I'm not complaining. Again, I shouldn't complain about this game. I do... It's not obvious. I fucking love this game. <laughs> but I also need to be honest about its problems. Um, mm -hmm. And, like, this game does take a lot of cheap shots. It's way better in the second game. Ooh. Is, oh, yeah, it's quite a fall. Um, the second game is... Much, much, much better about that kind of stuff. I'm not sure if I'd call it a better game in general. I do think I prefer the first one, but second game you think is. Do you prefer this one due to the story or due to the gameplay? That's I think, I think, I think the story. Um, I prefer Max as a character in this one. Um, yeah, I'd say like like the narrative elements of this game are better, gameplay wise. Max Payne 2 is definitely a superior game, but that makes sense. Um, I do prefer this one all around. Um, and, you know, that's, that's the taste thing. Um, if you don't care about narrative at all, I guess Max Payne 3 you could probably point out as the best one, because um, it has really good gameplay. Um, mm. 
but it's also broken up by unskippable cutscenes and all sorts of stuff. And the story in that game is not great, so if you're not into it, then it ain't for you. Um, I didn't really want to be using those there, but okay. You can see what I mean by, like, I have plenty of ammo, but, like... You know, my Desert Eagle's yeah. out, my Ingram's nearly out, but I've still got my shotguns and my, um, my Barettas. Okay, are you ready for a completely pointless puzzle they just put in this game for no reason? Again, this is, I think this is Apogee Stroke 3D Realms kind of putting their, their fingers in this pie, because this exact puzzle is in Duke Nukem 3D. Oh, wow. And it's just, like, pointless. It's, it's time-wasting. It's filler. They finger, they finger in the pie. Yeah, they have the, uh, I guess it's not quite fingers in pies is a different thing, but um, yeah, you know they they you can you can see where their DNA is on this. You can kind of see how yeah. they've um I, intervened. I've, I've always heard that phrase as like a, um, oh, what is it? Like you got connections. It's like usually what it means. Putting hand in the pot or something like that. Uh, okay, no, yeah, no. When when I say sorry, fingers in pies usually means like you've got connections rather than. So, so I guess I'm trying to say, like, you can see how they're connected to this. Okay, okay. Fuck. Okay. Oh. Okay. Wait. You okay? Hmm? hmm? What happens if you... If you stay okay, on it? Nope, never mind. Are you curious to see what would happen if you stay on it? No, I'm just... I'm... I'm, I'm... No, it was a dumb thought. My, my brain went, what if you get down, like, and you have to get back through, and I look, I you look die. down, and I'm like... Yeah, you fall if you you die if you fall. Okay, never mind. <laughs> it's okay, you got there. Yeah. The backstage Wait, area led to Lupino's inner sanctum. The hot air inside was like an invisible wall, thick with incense and something else. A sickly sweet smell that made you gag. Uh, rots perhaps. This was the rotten core of the big apple. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Lupino lurked somewhere ahead, like a spider at the center of his web, waiting. The vapors in the air started to make my head swim. Torn pieces of a letter lay scattered on the sofa. So it is worth noting in all this, Jack Lupino does work for the mob. Um, wow. <laughs> he's just sacrificing his own dudes to We all have side projects. I don't know. Yeah, you know. Everyone needs a hobby, right? Yeah. Some people play racquetball. Some people make model airplanes. Some people sacrifice their friends to unholy gods. I think friends is a bit of a stretch. You're right. Sorry. Um, <laughs> subordinates. Subordinates. Yes. This is this is what you know. This is this is just you know Sunday for a CEO, right? <laughs> yeah. Eat the rich people. Um, <laughs> this is mu this must be what it feels okay. like to own Amazon. Why can't I interact? It's like trying to interact. Okay, I can interact with this. Is there nothing? Okay, I guess it's just this. A wide range. Nope. Can't interact with that. I know that I'm supposed to be able to interact with that. I don't know what's going on there. Can I please read this? Is it over this maybe is what it's going for? Oh god. Okay, the exclamation mark range is huge. The in writing. The note had been torn to pieces, bloody fingerprints all over them. Don't want you to think that one of my boys is not playing with a full deck. Shape up, Jack. We are running a business here. I'd hate to send the trio to strong arm you. The trio were the Don's notorious henchmen. It was obvious that Lupino hadn't been intimidated by the threat. That's why he tore it up. Lupino's notes covered the table. Okay, now we can... Okay, you have to read Jeff them in a certain Lupino's order. crazy, all right. The table was scattered with notes of demented arcane nonsense written in rusty blood. A mishmash list of demons, devils, and dark gods evoked. Beelzebub! Asmodeus! Baphomet! Lucifer, Loki, Chitulu, Lilith, Hela, blood <laughs> given to you all. He was after that old Faustian deal, your soul for power and fortune. Just sign on the dotted line with your blood. Bit of a scattershot approach there to worship. Uh, did he say Cthulhu? He did say Chitulu. Chitulu. That's what he. Good lord. What yeah. That? Yeah. The the voice actor. This was before like H.P. Lovecraft Mania, right? Where they're just like everyone was talking yeah. about like Lovecraft's like. 
the internet did wonders for the Cthulhu mythos, like everyone reading it. So I can understand someone maybe not being familiar with the word and mis misreading it. It's really unfortunate though. I think it kind of adds to it that he really just doesn't know what he's working with here. Yeah, bad direction. Mm hmm. I do like you this. Know, it's like, yeah, I'm sacrificing my, my henchmen to a god that I think they sound like. Uh, could, 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 Cthulhu, Cthulhu is what he said, yeah. So Cthulhu, I want to I want to draw attention to one other thing as well. You mentioned earlier about how this place feel um, like looks like a converted church. Yeah. Now, if you if you listen, we've got like a church bell in the background. Ringing. It's like it's like distorted. Ooh. But it's there. There's whispering around. This is like this is a church. It's a church to whatever dark god he fucking wants. It's a church to his personal worship, right? Like it, it that's what it is. It isn't just doesn't just look like one. It is functionally for him a church or a place of worship of some kind. And I, I, that's actually really cool. I hadn't really thought about that before until you mentioned it. Yeah. Lupino's notebook lay on the pedestal. Jack Lupino was crazy, all right. Mythic wolves let loose to devour the sun and the moon. Lupino is the wolf. I'm Mr. Beast, the big bad Fenris wolf. I'm the end of the world man, wearing the flesh of fallen angels. After Y2K, the end of the world had become a cliche. But who was I to talk? A brooding underdog Avenger alone against an empire of evil, out to right a grave injustice. Everything was subjective. There were only personal apocalypses. Nothing is a cliche when it's happening to you. This whole game's a fucking cliche. Um, I'm Mr. Beast, and on this episode, we're sacrificing our minions to the god Chitulu. Oh my god! Again, no, it's a scattershot <laughs> approach. He's sacrificing them over to whoever wants. You know, it's a, it's the take a penny, leave a penny of gods, right? You just yeah <laughs> put it there, put the sacrifices out. If you need them, take them. If you don't, don't worry about it. You know, paying it forward. Yeah, exactly. So like, he's he's you know. Hera, you know, that's that's a Norse god. Lilith is from uh, Hebrew, um, like like Old Testament stuff, I think. Um, same with like Beelzebub and Baphomet. Like, it's he's, he's really just going for it. Yeah. Cthulhu's just fiction. That's that's just written by a dude in New England. Like, it's not... hey, you know what? The not like flesh it... of fallen angels. Come to me all! Astaroth, Beelzebub, Asmodeus, Baphomet, Lucifer, Loki, Satan, Chitulu, Lilith, Ella! Blood to you all! <laughs> Secret living under the skin of reality. I've seen it. He's not just crazy. Flesh. He sounds desperate. Oh, I'm the wolf, yeah! I am the wolf! worth noting that Lu that Lupino um, is an Italian name, obviously, meaning Little Wolf. Uh, I mean, hats off to the voice actor for really chewing the scenery. Uh, yeah. He had fun with that. Why are all these weapons in here? Hey. Oh, fuck. No, okay, that's fine. That's fine. This is fine. The vapors Did in the air see? started to make my head swim. Oh, you I don't need to. Um, <laughs> this oh. is a very short level. This is. The, the very end. So, because it was a, a level transition there. Okay, let's grab these again. Yep. Oh, I can't skip this, right? An ending. Downside to an ending cutscenes. You cannot skip them. They're very short, but. but uh, just wanted to show the. I guess there's supposed to be a font of blood in the middle? I guess? But it's very, like. transparent for blood. And 
Come on, drop down. There you are. Can I please fire? There we go. I swear the weapon changing is like being a bit slow as well. What the fuck? How does he not kill me? Um, he had a skill issue. Evidently. You've got to. The vapors in the air start to make. You've got to have 360 vision. I swear. The um, the the guys in the black coats are like the strongest of the mob guys. Oh. Um. They. They're all yeah. They're all like kind of levels of enemies, but the mafia guys are mostly all just about as weak as each other. These guys in the coats, I don't know if they are actually stronger, but they definitely like. They only appear like later on, like you know. With the mafia, that you don't see them like right at the beginning or anything. You have come. Oh, to the end. Painkillers. It's now. I will rise. I didn't get the bong. There it is. Where's she gonna be on this side this time? I'm just going to stay away from that drop down, because that's like what's been killing me here. Let me swap, thank you. Oh my god. Please swap, thank you. So the way you swap, by the way, is you switch, hover over which one you want, then you have to click to switch. Sometimes oh. that's just not doing it, and I don't know... Vapors in the air Jeez. start to make my head swim. Look the wrong direction for like one second. I get it this time, don't worry. Get to him, say Chitulu again. Every time it's always it a treat. A little bit more joy. <laughs> really? It's it's one of my favorite games to play. I think I told you about this, but okay. The game is this. It, it, it's it's a game you play basically to yourself, to others without them knowing. Okay. Whenever you're having a conversation with someone, it's close. Just mispronounce words on purpose. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah. You have told me that, and just like don't don't acknowledge it or anything like that. Yeah. And so then you you leave them thinking like, wait, did they just? Did they just? Yeah. And you can be, uh, and, and as I like to say, you can be as obvious or as subtle about it as you want. Sure can. What the hell is it this time? I don't know how many are going to spawn through that hole. Do I have grenades? I don't have grenades. Okay. Well done. Fuck! No. None of that. None of that. Not in my house. Okay. I need to get this guy. By the way, being in slow mode doesn't make you more accurate. Uh, you are just as inaccurate in slow mode as you are in um. When you're just running around, so. I know some games give you better accuracy in those kind of modes. This one definitely doesn't. <laughs> Believe me, I've experimented with it because I was curious. Man, I'm chewing through my um, Ingram ammo here and I haven't even fought Lupino yet. Oh fuck, no. No, come on. Oh. Jesus, alright. Is that everyone? Yes. And here's Lupino. I had known there'd have to be a catch in it somewhere, and this one was the Empire State Building of catches. Lupino was pumped up and dying to go 15 rounds with a mutant alligator. And then he started this spooky monkey talk, straight from a bad dream. Mine. I have tasted the flesh of fallen angels. 
I've tasted the devil's green blood. It runs in my veins. I've seen beyond a world of skin, the architecture of blood and bone and arrow. Death is coming! She is coming, and hell follows with her. This is the twilight winter. I am ready to be her son. <laughs> her time is now, and all who stand in her way must die! <laughs> and we all die. just appreciate the term die, spooky people. monkey talk. <laughs> I'm gonna use that now. I, I, I just... That whole line. Where he's just like, yeah, Jack the Peanut just started coming out with spooky monkey talk. I'm like, okay, sure. Oh, fuck, I'm out of finger ammo. Oh, come on, switch. Okay. Oh, I missed. No. There we go. Alright, first time with Pino. Actually, that was actually not too bad. When Lupino finally went down, I wanted to make real sure he'd stay that way. V was a bad monster. Turned them into friggin' zombie demons from outer space. I think he's dead already. We were playing that yeah, game all along. What happened. But dead or not, you've got the wrong guy. In stepped this knockout femme fatale holding a gun to my face. I returned the favor. Just that shark can tank noise. I didn't even hear it. Oh, what? Well, yeah, Lisa yeah, yeah. Punchinella. Oh, yeah. Lisa Punchinella was the Don's wife. Mona Sachs. Lisa's evil twin. Your safety's off, evil twin. You might hurt someone with that gun of yours. Lisa's the damsel in distress. I'm the professional. I'd blow you away without batting an eye. Sure. And you can check out my credentials splattered all over this joint. Jack couldn't have framed you. Not the state he was in. We're after the same slime bag. Angelo Quincinello's the one who murdered your friend and framed you with it. You know this for a fact. I've got my sources. I don't have a clue these days. I just shoot them as they come. Who put a contract on the Archfiend? This one's mine. I hate the guts of that sadistic wife beater. Why not pool our bullets for this one? I thought you'd never ask. My finger was starting to twitch. How do you like your whiskey? It's like Max is very quick to trust him. As long as you don't try to slip me a Mickey. You're a real angel, Max. It was good stuff. Tasted sweet as honey going down. Nothing personal. Can't risk you going berserk and getting Lisa killed. Uh, it's been dosed. The nightmare was always the same. Violent shapes moving in darkness, old and ugly. The killer's mad laughter was a riddle filled with wicked innuendo. There's that baby again. Oh. Somewhere, the baby was crying. We'll, we'll be saving that one the next week. Because oh, this yeah. game, boy, does it still have tricks. <laughs> Seems to. Sure does. But hey, that was... I like, the... I like that weird turn down a cultic lane. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Jack Lapino is... Um is something i'll give the movie credit he's the one character that was like just completely intact in the in the film he is a, he is he's less vocal he's he's much quieter um in the film uh but he is still the fanatic psychopath they actually i figured if they were going to cut a character it'd be him but they actually did it pretty well um again wow. movie bad but jack lupino was not the worst part of that film um <laughs> But yeah, um, that is the first chapter of Max Payne. Uh, the second and third chapters are shorter. Um, so, like, I think we can probably get through the rest of the game in the next stream. Like... I don't see why not. Yeah, I'll see. Maybe, maybe... I'd... It might have to be a longer stream, but I'm pretty sure we could do it. We can kill it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'll make sure to take some... Uh, I'll take some Vicodin, Vicodin and wash it down with a coffee. <laughs> Remember, folks, TLN is sponsored by Vicodin. Uh. <laughs> no, it's not. No, it's not. <laughs> Vicodin makes your pains go away. Uh, just introduces some new troubles. Hey, look, if Hugh Laurie 
can take Vicodin and like fix the whole world, like everyone's problems when they've, you know, they've got like loads of, if he can be Sherlock Holmes, right, and just solve mysteries, uh, medical mysteries on Vicodin, then clearly, clearly Vicodin is good for us and we should all be taking it. It makes us all big brained, right? Helps you sleep, gets rid of the pain, you know? I, I, what's not to love? It makes you bulletproof. Max is proof of that. Like, yeah. Fike it in, folks. I'm not sure if I'm going to be here next week, folks. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, too much Fike it in. Um... <laughs> yeah, I love the stuff. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. But that will be it from us for this week. Um, I really hope you enjoyed it. Um, we will be back next week, as mentioned, with more Max Payne. Um, like I said, we do plan on playing the whole game because it's not that long a game. So that'll be the plan for next week. And then after that, we'll be doing Fight Night. Probably, which, um, probably Fight Night. It's up to Max. It's Max's choice after Max Payne. So um, we'll see. Yeah. Maybe Max chooses Max Payne 2 and we get to watch him play that. Oh, no, you don't. <laughs> I struggle like hell if I do that. Max Payne 2 is an easier game. That might be the case, but uh, I'm, I would be brand new to it. I, I beat Max Payne 2 as a 10 year old on my Xbox, so I'm sure you could do it. I couldn't beat Donkey Kong 64 as a 17 year old. Yeah, but Donkey Kong 64 is a hell game. <laughs> Touche. It's a good game, but it's also like kind of unfair. Fair enough. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you folks will have a good one and we hope to see you next week that's it yeah see you folks <laughs>